This winter, prepare to be amazed as Elisa's Dance Academy and the Westlake Symphonic Orchestra come together to perform a variety of holiday favorites with concert quality music and dramatic visual effects. Perfect for all ages. Join us December 11th, 13th, and 14th to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Nutcracker Spectacular, presented by the Westlake Technical Entertainment Crew and Lexus of Austin. Tickets are on sale now. Get them online at whstec.com. Did you go ahead and take a break? When we take a look at the pep rally here, rivalry week, we gear up here and obviously a lot of sights, a lot of sounds, a lot of pageantry. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell up here in the booth with you. A little bit of early start here, obviously the uh, national anthem playing right now. We're going to go ahead and take a quick minute break right now. This is Westlake football. at Top Cavalier Stadium and you can hear behind us that national anthem what a rendition we bring you live coverage of Westlake and Lake Travis the Battle of the Lakes the ninth edition can you believe it nine times this is the yep. ninth time these two have hooked up this time once again at Cavalier Stadium John I always get excited for this one if there's one game on the schedule that both of these teams have circled preseason have no doubt it's tonight there are storylines galore tonight it's gonna be an exciting matchup just like it has been the last two uh, seasons at Chaparral Stadium two years ago, last year here in Lake Travis. A couple of close games. Lake Travis pulled it out at the end, but no doubt going to be a great game here tonight. Westlake and Lake Travis. Well, I know it's very loud, but we're going to go down to the sidelines. Abe Garcia, the third member of our broadcast crew, trying to hear everything we can say, brother. But I know it's very difficult down there. Describe the scene. It's been loud for the last 20 minutes down here, Joe and John. And like John alluded to right at the break, this is a rivalry game. I think Army, Navy, Texas OU, Michigan State, Ohio State. This is the game that both teams, both players have circled on their calendars. See, when do we play each other? And don't think that the coaches don't have this game circle themselves. That's Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. Let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineups as the captains meet midfield. We'll go with the Westlake Chaparral offense first. Across the line of scrimmage, it'll be Joe Gallinghouse along with Joe Hieronymus, Kyle Wasmuth, Jordan Edgar at right guard, and Michael Morell back at the starting lineup at right tackle. The receivers are Andrew Laycock, Nick Scott, Chase Coakley, Reed Klubnick, and the backs, of course, are Kanan clark Babin and Travis Braithwaite. Joining them in the backfield, obviously, is the quarterback, Sam Ellinger, 116 of 175. Through the air, 1,499 yards. He'll eclipse the 1,500 mark tonight. He's carried the ball 104 times, 554 yards rushing, six touchdowns, and, of course, he has the 17 touchdown passes and five interceptions. Just a sophomore. And, of course, the special teams, Rolanda Devar, the kicker, Manolo Gonzalez, is the punter. We take a look at the defense now for the Chaparrales. The defensive line looks like this. Elias Garcia along with Brecken Hager are the ends. Daniel Aidman and Bobby Buchowski up front in the middle. Mike linebacker is Gabe Duran. On the weak side is Hudson Hall. The uh, secondary, Hudson Peterson, and getting the start tonight at corner is Steven Rio in place of Ryan Marcus. The banded linebacker is Barrett Chambers. And, of course, the safeties, Matt Kelly and Max Mangum. We take a look at the Cavaliers on offense. We'll uh, see exactly, or the impact players, rather. Matt Kelly, Gabe Duran on defense. Of course, Sam Ellinger's going to have a, a whale of a game against this very tough defense. Dominic Delira, the quarterback for the uh, Lake Travis Cavaliers, along with a very talented defensive back. He's the man in the middle, James Bailey, a very talented defensive back. You heard Todd Dodge talk about it in no huddle with Todd Dodge in our radio pregame show. And Abe Willows back from an, a little bit of a hammy. Talked to his running backs coach, Jonathan Coates, earlier, former Trojan. And he told me he's just nursing a hammy. Feels good upstairs as well, but Abe is good to go in the backfield. So for the Lake Travis Cavaliers on defense, we'll take a look at their starters now. Across the line of scrimmage, it'll be Garrett Womack and Fino Pearson. And Tim Paul is out with a broken foot, so it will be Roberto Garcia, the junior, but no doubt we're going to see some rotation. In fact, I think Sam Ochoa is probably going to, to move up a move up from his linebacker position and move in to that uh, right tackle position. We'll have to see. Jason York and John Brewer are the uh, linebackers. The corners are Aaron Brown Nixon, brother of Sean Nixon, and Tanner Bush. James Bailey, of course, Chris Roller at the safeties, and Austin Hiller is the nickelback, or the bandit linebacker, if you will. Very similar defense, very similar offenses, John. This is going to be fun. Oh, it's, I just listen to this crowd and the atmosphere here at Lake Travis. This game is always exciting, and Westlake get the ball first. We're going to see Sam Ellinger, the sophomore, in a huge road game. 
and they kick it off. And fielding it here on the near side, bringing it out at the 10 yard line, out to the 17, and now falling forward to the 19 yard line. It's a good job by Nick Scott as he was bottled up there with very little real estate. The Chaparrales in their road white uniforms with the blue numbers, the red pants, the silver helmets with the red blocked letter W on the side. The men in black, the black trousers, black uniforms, white numerals, the black helmet with the LT and the five stars representing all five of the Lake Travis titles in 4A classification. Of course, they went to the state semifinal game a year ago, lost to Cedar Hill just like the Chaparrales did the year before. So we are just underway, and it's Ellinger and moving from his right to his left. As you picture it in your mind's eye on your radio and on the Westlake Shaft app, we'll give you all the social media opportunity here in just a moment. They load it up on the wide side, and Ellinger is just going to run here to the near side. Around left end, he muscles his way out to the five-yard line, and a good job there by the defense. And it was Sam Ochoa on the stop, second down five. The starting lineup brought to you by Texas Honey Ham Company. Kick off your day with breakfast at Texas Honey Ham Company. Trent, Kelly, Rob, the whole game, they're back. And better than ever, a Texas Honeyham, proud sponsor of Westlake football. We're 27 seconds into this one, second down and five. Only a quarterback run for Ellinger. Three wide receivers to the far side right. One here to the tight side left. Now Ellinger looking and has a man. That's Laycock. He's drilled at the 30-yard line, but not before he picks up a first down. In fact, they're going to say that he got out to the 31-yard line, and it's a six-yard pickup at a first down. Chris Roller on the stop. Yeah, really nice stop there by Chris Roller. But a big first down early for Westlake. Get this offense rolling with an early first down. We'll see what they do here on first down. Two wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left. That's to the left of Sam Ellinger. Now the handoff on the zone read will stay with Ellinger. Ellinger just straight up the gut, reading the linebacker in the middle. Roller comes in to make the stop at the 41-yard line, but it is good for a 10-yard gain and a first down. And just a straight zone read play where Ellinger using his size right up the middle. And Chris Roller made the huge hit on Andrew Laycock right there. It was Sam Ellinger delivering the hit on Chris Roller, the safety, getting run over there by the sophomore quarterback. No score. We are just underway. Game's opening drive. Two wide receivers to the right of Ellinger. One here to the near side left. A back on either side. It's Braithwaite and Kanan Clark Bateman. Bateman takes the fake handoff. Now play action. Firing over the middle. That pass is caught by Reed Klutnick. And they're into Lake Travis territory. Down to the Cavalier 42-yard line. It's Austin Hiller on the stop. The 6'1", the 180-pound sophomore, but not before a big gain down to the 42-yard line, 17-yard pickup to Klubnik, and it's first down. And if there's a weakness on this late Travis defense, it is in the secondary, so you want to attack this secondary so far, the offensive line giving Sam time. Ten and a half minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Game's first drive belongs to Westlake. They're moving from our right to your left, and if you're watching on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 323, they are moving in the opposite direction. Our camera's on the opposite side of the field. Now looking on a no-step drop out of the gun, fires a tight tight window there and it's incomplete the first incompletion and right there was Jason York to blow up Nick Scott Nick Scott was the intended receiver but York right there to make the play and an interesting note on that Klubnik catch Klubnik's actually deed up by a lifelong friend Tanner Bush is lining up there on the corner and a lifelong friend at the corner but uh, the cornerback position and no doubt both of those guys very very involved but it looks like Bush is lining up on Coakley now, taking the bigger target on the far right side. It's second down and 10, following the, inter following the incompletion from the Cavalier 42. Zone read. Here's Nick Scott, who we saw last week, and there's a nice tackle right there at the 41-yard line. And it was Fino Pearson that brought him down. Scott just squeaking forward for maybe a yard gain. So a good defensive stand here. And checking into the ball game is Hunter Greer, 5'11", 185-pound sophomore. He's checking in here for... For Garrett Womack. So they go with a four-man, a three-man front now. Blitz shown on third down and ten. Just inside the 42-yard line. Ellinger back to pass on third down. Here comes the blitz, but flags fly, and it's going to be a false start on Westlake. You know, James Bailey, the rover, number 11, he's the guy to watch on this Lake Travis defense. They like to blitz him a lot, especially in obvious passing situations, which Westlake was in right there and will be again right now. They're going to run him right up against that tackle, and Westlake is going to slide their protection to whichever side of the field that James Bailey is on. And watch as well. He's very good at anticipating the snap count and getting a jump on the tackle. Westlake might go with some hard count hard counts during this game. Big third down play following the false start. Third and 15. The ball resting right around the 47-yard line on the right hash. Ellinger now on a two-step drop. They pick up the blitz. He stands in the pocket. Now it collapses. He's rolling right. Throws right. That pass is caught. And it's going to be well short of the first down. In fact, it actually gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Klubnik makes the grab. It's a good pickup 
of about five yards, and it will create a situation here for Manolo Gonzalez, or perhaps Ellinger will stay in the game, maybe pooch punt here. Womack checks back in. You can see presence of mind here for Ellinger to not get sacked. At least they advance the ball forward, and it's a good catch there by Klubnik. Here it is on first, fourth down and 10 from the Cavalier 42-yard line. They're taking a look at the defensive set. Four down linemen here for the Lake Travis defense. On fourth and 10, here comes the pooch punt. It's an end-over-end punt that'll hit at the five and take a wonderful chaparral bounce at the three-yard line, and it's down at the three. 97 yards of pay dirt in front of the Cavaliers. Not a bad way to play the field position game for Sam Ellinger. Couldn't complete the third down conversion, but he nails one there inside the five. Yeah, if you're not going to get points on the first drive of the game, you'll take a, what, a 40-yard drive and then a punt all the way down to the three-yard line, play the field position game. Westlake did it beautifully right there. A nice punt by Sam Ellinger, and now this defense has an opportunity to get the ball back to the offense with great field position. Jeffrey Gibbs, Hunter Rhodes, Brendan Hymas, Aiden Rourke, and Griffin Limley make up the offensive line. We'll get you the rest. Dominic Delira, 6'1", 180-pound senior. And now they're just going to run it right out of the backfield. And a nice defense up front. Count your chaparrales, all of them there at the bottom end of the pile. Barrett Chambers coming up out of the back along with Hudson Hall. You name it, they're there. And the ball's down at about the two-yard line. So officially no gain really on the play. And Dominic Delira, 6'1", 180-pound senior, 59 of 102 for 910 yards. He's thrown 11 touchdowns, thrown two picks. And he is backed up here. Officially it's a gain of one, second down and nine. The ball at the Cavalier two-yard line. Now back to pass, a quick hitch pass here to the near side. A nice job there by Matt Kelly, reading it beautifully. The pass was caught by Barkley, Malik Barkley, the 5'11", 180-pound sophomore, but he was hit immediately by Kelly inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It'll be third down, and now the up-tempo inside eight minutes, like Lake Travis's initial drive on the night. Two wide receivers to the right of Dominic Delira. Two receivers to his left. Four down front here for Westlake. Here comes the pressure on third down. They wing it, and it's picked off by Hudson Hall. Wow, bubbled and caught with one hand. Hudson Hall, the senior linebacker, a third of our Shaft of the Week, and he has an interception, and it's first and goal Westlake. Oh, what a huge play on third down. Hudson Hall hauls it in, and it's first down Westlake. That's just a three-year starter right there at linebacker. Hudson Hall dropping into coverage, cut off the route. He read that beautifully. Same slant pass that was, was thrown on second down. Hudson Hall in a game that you know him and Brecken Hager, Gabe Duran, three guys that play linebacker who played and started as sophomores, suffered two just heart-wrenching defeats the past couple of seasons. They want this bad, and Hudson Hall comes up with the first huge play of the ball game. He's one of the trio of the Shaft of the Week. We interviewed Hall, Duran, and Brecken Hager. And Hall coming up with a big interception there, and they're going to actually say he's down at the 12-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 12. Now the zone read and handing the ball off as Ellinger inside handoff goes to Kane and Clark Bateman and he surges forward for about a one yard gain. Good pop there on defense for the Kane Lake Travis Cavaliers. Bateman Jason here. York making the call. Tackle by Jason York. A one yard gain. Jazz with second nine. Second down and nine, the ball at the 11 yard line. Two backs in the backfield with Ellinger. To his right is Braithwaite, to his left is Bateman. Klubnik, the slot right, Coakley wide right, one receiver, Andrew Laycock here to the left. And now here comes the uh, quarterback sweep play, now cutting it back inside is Ellinger, he's inside the five, down to the three, to the two yard line. And a nice pop there by Chris Roller at the end of the play, good blocking up front from the offensive line, including the two pulling running backs on the quarterback sweep. That is a first down, and it's first and goal Westlake at the two. And that was a perfect play call for that defensive play call. James Bailey coming off the right side of the formation for Westlake. A QB sweep to the left side. Now they load it up in the backfield, and Hager, Hall, and Duran in, and short yardage. Now they're just going to try to blow everybody up. Now Ellinger trying to fight his way into the end zone, and he is in with a two-yard touchdown run. When you put all three linebackers in as blockers, you better have a hole. And it was a brief one, but Ellinger fires his way into the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Westlake. So off the interception by Hudson Hall, Hall, Hager, Duran, all blocked for Ellinger, who runs in for his seventh rushing touchdown. Touchdown, Westlake. And like last year, Westlake with a great start here on the road against Lake Travis. Defense comes up with a huge interception. Hudson Hall right around the 11, 12 yard line. And then the offense does the work and finished off by Sam Ellinger. Great start here. Let's see if Navarro can add on the PAT. 
6.44 remaining here in the opening quarter. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell. Abe Garcia is down on the sideline. Our spotter is Jimmy Root. Our social media producer is Tyler Martin. Brian Ferguson, our statistician. And, of course, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Westlake Nation. The Twitter handle, at Westlake underscore Nation. Instagram.com. You want to follow the pictures that Abe posts tonight. Instagram.com backslash Westlake Nation. And, of course, you're listening to us live on the Westlake Shap app. Download it from the iTunes store. Just on your phone, dial it up, it's free. The Westlake Shap app on all of your Apple devices. A penalty here at the end of the play is gonna back things up to the 15 yard line. So this will be a 25 yard extra point here for Rolando Navarro. Out of the hold of Jake Coker, the snap by Spacek is back. Good snap, good hold, the kick is up and the 25 yard extra point is good. 6.44 to play in the opening quarter. Westlake takes advantage on the turnover and scores seven. It's Westlake seven, Lake Travis nothing. This is Westlake football. Uh, when members have fraud. The second of the season, it only took 57 seconds off this first quarter clock. And it's a two-yard touchdown run by Sam Ellinger, his seventh of the season. And the Westlake Chaparrales lead 7-0. That is the Reds Barbershop scoring drive brought to you by Reds Barbershop. 1717 West 6th Street, Longhorn owned, Longhorn operated. Go in for your game day haircut, folks, or it's actually a game day special. You can either get a neck trim or a beer trim. If you get a neck trim or a beer trim, it's 15 bucks. 20, you get both. That's the game day special. If football is on, take a, take advantage at Red's Barbershop at 1717 West 6th. The kickoff here, successful inside the five yard line and bringing it out for Lake Travis. And here comes down, down the right sideline and he's broken it up here on the near side. A great job by Chris Roller on the punt return and he is going to the house. Roller stepping around, not one, but two blockers right around the 30 yard line, sprung him forward. And just like that, Chris Roller has reignited this, this crowd here, but a flag is down at the 30 yard line. So the touchdown most likely coming off the board. So a lot, of, a lot of excitement there, but Wayne Elliott, our head referee, is going to indicate there is holding on the receiving team. This will be a 10-yard penalty from the, start of the, from the spot of the foul. Let's go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia, Abe. Yeah, and you can clearly see that block. It was a great run by Lake Travis. But going back to the intercession by Hudson Hall, it's kind of reminiscent of a guy that plays down in Houston called J.J. Watt. I mean, you, it takes some athleticism to be able to come off the line and catch a ball, a hot pass out there on the sideline. That was a great play by Hudson Hall and got Westlake on the ball on the road which is very big in this kind of game yeah scoring first always a challenge and they were able to do it for the second year in a row and remember too the special teams last year for Lake Travis that's what kept them in the game early the punt return by Dominic Packer big holding penalty right here we'll see if Westlake's defense can take control back after it looked like Lake Travis would steal momentum well either way you slice it the touchdown comes off the board but it's a half the field here blitz showing here delirious throwing and that pass is caught on the left side and it's complete here to the near side a nice job there making the grab as Cade Green makes the grab. And it's two-yard gain on the pass, and Cade Green wearing the number six. I tell you what, these jerseys are all kinds of messed up. But he wore number 80 last year, so Cade Green wearing number six. He's in motion from the left side here to the near side to complete a trio. Now here comes the blitz, but flags come in, and Hager had beat his man on that far side, John. He had raced right by one of the uh, would-be offensive linemen there. Yeah, going to be a false start here on late. Travis going to back him up to a second down and 13 here. And on that last play, that first down play, what a job by Steven Rio to come off the block. He wasn't the guy covering Cade Green, but he made the play to come off the block and hold Green to a two-yard gain. So it'll be second down and 13 after the loss of five. Green going in motion. Now here's the play action, the blitz, and they pick it up. Nice screen pass there, and it's complete to Willows. Willows around the left corner, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and picks up five more yards down to the 35-yard line. The stop made there by Daniel Abeman coming all the way across the field to make that stop on Willows. And a good pickup there on the screen by Delira. The receivers, Malik Barkley, Cade Green, Grant Foster, and Connor Oates. We'll see Patrick Medina as well. Abe Willows, the tailback, Dominic Delira. Is the quarterback. Two wide receivers each way. Willows to his right. Now on third down, he rolls. Here comes the blitz. And Barrett Chambers hunted him down and finishing him off is Hudson Hall. A sack back to the 42-yard line. The 28th sack 
of the season for this Westlake defense. And getting the start tonight, Barrett Chambers got in the backfield from the weak side. John blew it up and gave Hudson Hall the time to bring down Delira. Yeah, how about that play call by Tony Salazar, the defensive coordinator for Westlake, bringing Hudson Hall from one side, Barrett Chambers from the other, and getting to Dominic Delira. Delira's the punter, and he's going to line drive this one, and Matt Kelly's going to let it drive right over his head. And how about that? That's a chip shot from about a 120 and a beauty. John, that looks like one of yours right there with about 105 yards. Stuck it right there at the five-yard line, hopped back to the six. So a lot of field to cover for Lake Travis and West, or for Westlake's offense, rather, but a nice hold after the big return. The holding call bails out the Westlake special teams. They were able to play defense. They dial up a perfect blitz on third down and force the punt for Lake Travis. Yeah, and, and tough field, field position here for Westlake, but still, this is a huge possession for the Lake Travis defense. Got to get a stop. If Westlake is able to put a drive together, a 94-yard drive, march down the field, get a touchdown, they can really take control of this ball game early. We're inside 87.9 FM is our shaft signal inside Cavalier Stadium. 7-0, Westlake with the lead. They get the football back. A little flanker screen here to the near side. Klubnik picks up a block. Now hammers his way out to the 14-yard line. And right there, Chris Roller along with Jason York just absolutely colliding with Klubnik out to the 14-yard line. So it's a four-yard pickup on the flanker screen to Klubnik. They're going to say it's an eight-yard gain. Second down and two. Now Ellinger's just forced to roll out and collapse towards the middle. Falls forward to the 15-yard line. Picks up one. It'll be third down and one. Ochoa on the stop. And look who's in the ball game. Number 15, Sean Rawlings. There he is. Coming back from the ACL tear. Good to see him in the game at running back. That's what, a five-month recovery process for Sean Rawlings. And as now he's going to go out of the game. And he brought on the field. He is all kinds of hyped up. Here's a guy that never Here thought the, he would the see the field. three linebackers coming in. And the three linebackers coming in. This is the jumbo set. They need a yard to pick up first down. Here's third and one from the 15-yard line in... Westlake territory. They go with the shotgun. Here comes the quarterback sneak, and Ellinger's not going to get it. They blow it up immediately. A loss of one on the play, and Brewer, John Brewer, in there to make the stop initially, and it's fourth down here for Westlake. A little second guessing there, and now the punting unit coming on for Westlake. Yeah, just didn't have enough blockers there for how many defenders that Lake Travis had right there over the right guard for Westlake. The lead blockers went in other directions, and Sam Ellinger got stopped there, so all about execution here on the punt for Manola Gonzalez. Gonzalez from right at the goal line will punt this from his right to left. And Roller back deep to receive here right around the 49-yard line in his own territory. And now the punt gets the it gets away. Manolo somehow able to soccer style it out wow. and somehow was able to avoid the safety. And Manolo Gonzalez is going to be credited for probably the most amazing punt in high school football in Central <laughs> Texas because that snap was back from Spacek. It rolled way past him. He had to go retrieve it and somehow got off a soccer-style accidental punt that rolled 40 yards out to the Westlake 40-yard line. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he didn't have my thought process, which was just take the safety, take the safety. That ball went all the way to the back line, and there were late Travis special teamers bearing down on Manolo Gonzalez, basically just got off a ground ball that made it all the way to the 40. What a play by him. Seven to nothing as Manolo Gonzalez bails everybody out on special teams. Now the handoff goes to Abe Willows, and he's wrapped up immediately. Gabe Duran in along with Aidman as they wrap him up right at the 38-yard line. So it's a pickup of two yards. It'll be second down and eight. The ball just inside the right hash. Joe Taylor, John Nidell, Abe Garcia, Jimmy Root, our spotter, Tyler Martin, our social media producer, and, of course, Brian Ferguson providing the stats. Seven to nothing, Westlake off the turnover, the Hudson Hall interception. Three plays later, the Shafts were in the end zone on the one-yard dive play to Ellinger. Two wide receivers each way here on second and eight. Now back to passes to Lira. He's going deep, double coverage. Now trying to catch up to his Matt Kelly and it's incomplete, overthrown. Peterson and Kelly on the coverage, intended to downfield for Malik Barkley. Barkley just trying to get behind the defense. Good job there, collapsing from the safety, realizing Delero was going deep. One thing to keep in mind, too, last year, Lake Travis had a fourth and 15 in a similar situation in the fourth or in the first quarter, went for it. So this would be four down territory here for Lake Travis, trying to respond. Third down and eight, four, la four down linemen here for the Westlake Chaparrales. Now cheating over to the right side is Duran. Now Delero thinks about running, and he has nowhere to go. He is set back at the 48-yard line. Once again, Gabe Duran. 
And I tell you what, Hudson Hall, Gabe Duran, and Brecken Hager have come to play tonight. And now Hall and Duran with sacks here in the first half. Yeah, and Manola Gonzalez gets the gold star right there for that defensive stop because of the play he made on special teams. So far, Westlake, the definition of bending but not breaking in special teams. And certainly a big play there for Manolo. Second time he's had to pump him right around his own 50-yard line now. Matt Kelly's going to bring it out. He has it at the 12, now angles out to the 20, and he falls forward to about the 21-yard line. So the Chaparral survive the muffed punt, and again, like John said, the gold star for a line drive punt from the back line that maybe made it about three feet off the ground, and luckily didn't hit anybody. Yeah, we talk about these linebackers and the presence that they've already shown in this game. I talked to Isaac Baldwin and Jordan Edgar this week, and I asked, and both of them said, Brecken Hager has been absolutely nuts this week, and they echoed the same thing about Hudson Hall and Gabe Duran. I said, Isaac, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad do you want to win this game? He said, about an 11. I said, what about Brecken? He said 100. <laughs> he these, these go to 11. Yeah. Absolutely. He, uh, these guys really want to win this ball game more than any other, I think. First down and 10, the ball marked at their own 20-yard line after they survived the muffed snap and an unbelievable 40-yard punt by Manolo Gonzalez. It's like it never happened. Two wides each way. They open it up here, and the handoff will go to Sean Rawlings, and that is the first carry of Sean Rawlings' senior season, and it is for a gain out to the 22-yard line. The stop made by York, but I'll tell you what, that's a little wrinkle in the backfield that I don't think Lake Travis expected to see. Now, he's been in pads and in jerseys the last couple of weeks, but it's his first action, and he lines up as a running back. Now they run it to him again here on the zone read, and taking the ball from Ellinger is Sean Rawlings. Rawlings and the seniors out to the 27 yard line. Nice blocking up front on the left side there. And now Fino Pearson makes the stop. And you can see he's not really doing anything too much right now. He's just feeling it out, trying to get hit for the first couple of times. He checks out. Bateman checks in on third down and three. 0 for 2 in their last third down tries. Three wide receivers to the far side right, one here to the near side left. Probably not supposed to be playing that music. I bet you anything that Sam Ellinger would pull a Peyton Manning right now. Rolling, now flush, still running, still rolling, and could not get rid of it, and a huge sack back inside the 15-yard line. Jason York leading the charge, and it's a huge coverage sack there as everybody was covered up downfield, John, and the first sack of the ball game goes to Lake Travis here for their defensive unit. It's the third series, and that's 24 sacks as a team on this Lake Travis defense for the 2014 campaign. And they just overloaded the right side of the line there. They had two blockers for Westlake out there against three Lake Travis defenders. Garrett Womack, the defensive end, was the first to break through the line, called Kazan to try to buy some time, and he couldn't do it there as he took the sack. Manolo Gonzalez's second straight punt from the goal line. This one a whole lot better. Now calling for the fair catch. Not too sure why Chris Roller chose to do that. He had a lot of real estate, but he'll make the fair grab at the 46-yard line in his own territory. So for the Westlake Chaparrales, unable to take advantage of the defensive stand. But right now, we take a timeout. After one quarter of play, it's Westlake 7, Lake Travis nothing. Live from Cavalier Stadium, this is Westlake football. 10 from the Cavalier 46 yard line for the Lake Travis Cavaliers shut out in the first quarter would you believe that's the first time that has happened this season 7-0 Westlake with the lead Joe Taylor alongside John Idelli Garcia down on the sidelines a little play action now they swing it out to Barkley Barkley patrolled there by Peterson along with Matt Kelly and he's pushed out of bounds out to the 49 yard line so they're very quickly into Westlake territory and it's a pickup of five yards on just a little swing pass out to Barkley, a little flanker screen that worked for Westlake to Klubnik for eight yards on the first play of the last possession. Two wide receivers to the left of Delira. He's looking left, he throws left, and that pass is uh, caught. But ninth, right there was Steven Rio. He bit on the coverage and bit right. And Rio tackles Cade Green. Cade Green back near the... 48-yard line, so he might have picked up one yard. Well, they're going to actually move it down to about the 47-yard line, so it's officially a two-yard pickup, but what a great isolation play there by Steven Rio getting his first start at corner, and he's definitely got a load to think about with Colton Bailey in the ball game at 6'5". Now they're going to roll Colton to the far side right. Big target there, and Hudson Peterson's going to switch it up here. He'll guard Bailey. Three wide receivers to the right. Now the option play to Abe Willows. Chasing him is Matt Kelly. There's a hold, but it's not called. 
flags don't fly inside the 45 yard line it was about as clear as day and my resident referee over here john nidell absolutely going insane because we see it on the replay here just a shove right there the hold john take it yeah i don't know exactly who that was the westlake chaparrales is right on the right side of the screen there on the tv broadcast absolutely right at the point of attack missed call there by the referees 43 yard line in chaparral territory no call first down now delira is going to run for it and he has huge room inside the 30. he's angling towards the 29 yard line and a nice play there in the open field by steven rio rio trips him up at the 30 yard line and it's first down and 10 for the lake travis cavaliers now they're on the move that pickup of 13 yards at a first down here. The ball marked at the left hash, moving right to left here from our perspective, left to right on the television broadcast. As you listen on the uh, Westlake Shaft app, two wide receivers each way. Now the handoff will go to Willows. Willows met hard up front by Hudson Hall initially, and he plunges his way down to the 27-yard line. How about that collision with Hudson Hall at the 27-yard line? Westlake doing a good job so far, other than that, just that run by Dominic Galera just now, stopping the running game. Last year, bottled up Sean Nixon for three quarters. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that he really broke free, and you could see Westlake's defense getting tired. So that'll be something to watch as the game goes along. Will this Westlake run defense hold up for four quarters? If it does, it's probably going to be a W for Westlake. Three wide receivers to the right, one here to the near side left. Delira rolling right, flags come in. This will be a procedure penalty. It'll be offsides on the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Or excuse me, a false start as Wayne Elliott chimes in. Wayne Elliott of NFL fame. And it is a false start on a wide receiver. That's uh, not often a call you see. Now Barkley checking back into the game. And Patrick Medina will split out wide to the right. And Lake Travis has gotten some good field position early in this ball game. But they keep putting themselves in bad situations with either a sack or this is their second procedure penalty that's given them a second and 13. We'll see how they respond here. Three wide receivers to the far side right. Now going in motion here to the near side as one wide receiver. Here comes the blitz. Now throwing downfield. That pass is incomplete and Rio is right there no pass interference no flag as Rio turned around and batted the ball away and that's just a textbook corner play right there John where he knew he had an opportunity at the ball but just turned around and he knew he had one-on-one -on -one coverage he knew he was the only one there and he broke it up nicely incomplete pass third down and 13 here from the Westlake 33 yard line Delira gets the low snap he's back here comes the rush fires over the middle and it's incomplete and he had pressure from Breck and Hager and he had to throw it when he didn't want to and right now Dominic Delira absolutely disgusted with how fast Hager got through that line to disrupt the release yeah this Westlake defense really playing outstanding ball right now is it looks like Dom Delira is gonna come off the field they're gonna bring in the punting unit and one thing to note too, Garrett Stotts three-year starter at center got injured a few weeks ago he's also their starting deep snap and actually they're going to go for a 50-yard field goal here. So here it is. It'll be Brandon Satterfield, 6'1", 185-pound senior. He's 7 of 8 from 50 yards out. Out of the hole to Medina. The snap is down. The kick is up. It is close, but it is good. How about that? Right over the crossbar. 9.27 remaining here in the first half. And a 50-yard field goal good by Brandon Satterfield. We'll be right back. Westlake leading Lake Travis 7-3. This is Westlake football. Eight plays, 54 yards on the drive. Took two minutes and 35 seconds off the clock. 50-yard field goal good. It's 7-3. Westlake with the edge, but Lake Travis on the board. After the kickoff, we'll pause for station identification. We'll get it for you here at the top of the hour. 8 o'clock Central time here. And it has lived up to the hype. A lot of defense early here. The interception by Hudson Hall. The touchdown three, lit, three plays later by Sam Ellinger. And now a 50-yard field goal. And this will be fielded by Scott at the 2, Nick at the 10, Scott at the 15, cutting it towards the middle of the field. He's still on his feet, and he's trying to make it out to the 18-yard line, and it's Jason York on special teams that will bring him down. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Westlake football. A 17-yard return, and Westlake will, I believe, make their way out on offense here. Don't think a timeout was called. They're just taking their time here before they whistle in the... And Chase Co Coakley will come out and line up on the near side right to the right of Sam Ellinger. Bateman in as the lone tailback. Three wide receivers to the near side right to the right of Ellinger. To the left is Laycock. 
First down and 10 from their own 18-yard line here. 7-3 your score with 9-17 to play here in the first half. I'm Joe. He's John. Abe's down on the sidelines. Pocket now collapsing. Ellinger running into trouble. He's still on his feet. Now dragging forward back to about the 17-yard line. So maybe a loss of one or no gain officially. Now they're going to say it's a loss of one. So it'll be second down and 11. Good coverage downfield. And what was a weakness, John, is really holding tight right now. That Lake Travis secondary doing a whale of a job. Yeah, and these routes on that play, especially very slow developing routes, Sam wasn't able to find a receiver and really did the smart thing there. Didn't try to force it into coverage, just took the one-yard loss, lived to play another down, and it's second down. Second down and 11 here after the loss. Pino Pearson delivering the tackle on Ellinger, and now Ellinger is going to hand it off on the zone replay, and taking it off left tackle is Bateman. Brewer there to meet him out of the linebacking position, advances it out to the 19-yard line, so it's a two-yard gain. 8.23, now the clock moving as we get a good look at Kanan Clark Bateman. And he's really just been a workhorse up front and a heck of a blocker out of the backfield, kind of providing that extra protection on the back end of plays, especially passing plays. And it'll be third down and nine. Westlake 0 for their last four on third down conversions. Three wide receivers to the right of Ellinger, one to the left. A back is Bateman to the left of Ellinger. Ellinger now back to pass on third and nine. Here comes the blitz. He rolls out of it, finds time, fires downfield, has Klubnik for the first down. Out past the 30 to the 34-yard line. And he's knocked out of bounds right around his own bench, and Austin Hiller was really the only man that could catch him, and he did. Knocked him out at the 35-yard line. It is an 11-yard pickup and a first down. And that was an incredible play there by Sam Ellinger. A little Tony Romo spin move out of the pocket and a nice delivery moving to his left to Reed Klubnik for a huge first down on third and long. From the 35-yard line, now Ellinger with a little bit of space. Two wide receivers, no step drop. Now he rolls again a la Tony Romo. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Just tough running to get back to the original line of scrimmage, and he's knocked down just outside the left hash mark at the 36-yard line. Garrett Womack making the stop. And Fino Pearson hit Ellinger, and Pearson's helmet came off because Ellinger is a big body, so Pearson will have to come out of this ball game for this play. Fino Pearson making the stop, like we mentioned. Three wide receivers to the right of Ellinger, one back to the left, and Sean Rawlings is the receiver to the far side left. On second down and nine. Ellinger back to pass, looking left, but fires over the middle. That pass caught by Rawlings. Rawlings just tripped up, and he says he didn't go down, but it looks like the umpire is going to rule him down. Garrett Womack making the stop right around the right around the 43-yard line and literally by the shoestrings as Rawlings thought that his knee didn't touch the ground. We have the advantage of replay. We'll take a look at it. Did his knee hit the ground? Watch the elbow down. as well. His hand is down. His knee did not touch the ground, I but maybe the right the wrist may have hit the ground. So barely by an eyelash. Third down and seven here for Ellinger. Two wide receivers each way. The back to the left of Ellinger is Bateman. Here's snap on third and nine. Rolling, looking downfield, and that pass is almost intercepted by Chris Roller, but a little confusion there as Klubnik is kind of yelling back at the line of scrimmage along with Andrew Laycock. Definitely some confusion pre-snap and certainly confusion on the route there on the incomplete pass. Yeah, an option route there by Reed Klubnik and Grant Foster was sitting in a zone underneath, so Klubnik was pointing out Foster that he had that he had sat down in that zone, so he was communicating with Sam Ellinger that about which route he was supposed to run. Obviously a little disagreement there and miscommunication. So it will bring Manolo Gonzalez in for his third punt of the half. 7-3, Westlake with the lead. Six and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Gonzalez will hit it from right around his own 27-yard line. It'll hang up in the air about 3.3. And Roller actually taking a huge chance there, fielding it on the hop, a lot of ground ball at the shortstop. That took a tweener, and he is lucky. Yeah. Nice job there by Michael Siebert to be the first one on the spot to tackle him at the 30-yard line. But Roller with a huge gamble there gutsy play there by Chris Roller probably saved about five to ten yards giving the Westlake Cavaliers the ball at the 30-yard line but still he bobbled that ball for a split second before corralling it and getting hit there at the 30. 621 to remain in the first half 7-3 these two offensive juggernauts all averaging over 450 yards of offense and it's only 7-3 Lake Travis down at home the handoff inside goes to Willows. Abe out to the 33-yard line. Stop made there by Gabe Duran. We'll go to Abe Garcia here in just a moment. 
but a nice little three-yard surge by Willows, an up-tempo offense here for Lake Travis. Two wide receivers each way, a back to the left, that's Willows. Delira back to pass, quick step, and he throws to the right. That pass is caught. The flag comes in on the back side of the play, and it's complete to Grant Foster. Foster's first grab, and for Foster, that is his 20th catch on the season, but a flag comes in as the catch was made. And as Patrick Medina, it's going to be a pass interference on the offense. Patrick Medina was out there where the pass was completed, blocking on the play while the ball was in the air. So the pass interference goes against Lake Travis, another big penalty by the Cavaliers. Yeah, Medina's got his palms up, looking to the sideline, wondering what in the world could I have done there. But nonetheless, it's a 15-yard mark off here and a huge break for the Westlake defense is now good, good field position turns into questionable field position back to the Cavalier 18-yard line. They empty the backfield, five wides in the formation. Three to the left of Dominic, and he fires left. Little flanker screen to Foster. Foster picks up a block at the 20. Out to the 25 as he cuts it inside the numbers. Barrett Chambers on the stop. Good job there by Ryan Marcus. He's rotating into the ball game with Steven Rio as well. So you're going to see fresh corners guarding these Lake Travis receivers. And it's a good pickup. It'll set up second down, or excuse me, third down and 14 following that 15-yard pass interference on Medina and the offense. Third down, two wide receivers each way here. Willows in the backfield. Now barking orders, changing the play briefly here is Delira. Delira on third and 14. Back to pass on a three-step drop. Here comes Buchowski. He chases him out of the pocket, firing downfield. Here comes the football, and it is well overthrown, intended for Foster. And it was really just a fly ball down there that both center fielders, Matt Kelly and Max Mangan, were just trying to get around to make sure that Foster did not have an opportunity there. But good pressure up front. Buchowski altering the position in the backfield, and Delira once again throwing before he wants to. And that, that, that right there shows you why the QB hurry is just as much an important stat as, say, a sack, because right there, Buchowski forced Delira out of the pocket, forced him to take the eyes off of his receivers and had to twist around, really didn't get his eyes back downfield, just had to launch that ball down the field. Sam Stanka trying to get loose, and a high snap there, and able to corral it is... Delira, Delira letting it go. It flies to the right side of the field and takes a huge Lake Travis bounce What a play there by Dominic Delira, too, to corral that football. We had a one-handed grab on yeah. the snap, and that's the second time on special teams we've seen the punt snap go awry. I, I thought it, that was for sure over his head at the snap, but what a job there. That's why you have a quarterback back there who has the hands of Dominic Delira to corral that football and avoid disaster here for Lake Travis. So it'll be first down and 10, and right now, it is exactly like I predicted to a couple of folks earlier this week. This is a boxing match here. It's all going to be about the seven minutes coming out of the locker room. Lake Travis will get the football. They'll have to make the adjustments. And, of course, Westlake will make the adjustments defensively. But right now, a lot of jabs, a couple of hook shots with an interception, and, of course, the touchdown for Westlake. They lead 7-3 to three with 4.45 to play. Now Ellinger getting loose. Little quarterback sweep play again, and he makes his way out to the 37-yard line and falls forward to the 38. Jason York on the stop for the West Le for the Lake Travis Cavalier defense. And just great blocking there by the offensive line. You see a hat on a hat there for Westlake and the offensive lineman driving Cavaliers down the field and Sam Ellinger able to pick apart his hole there and make a nine yard gain, an eight yard gain for Ellinger to bring up a second down. Second down and two, a yeah, two back yards. on either side of Ellinger. Two to his right, one to his left. Receivers now just a zone read, and the handoff will go to Sean Rawlings, and Rawlings picked up the first down, and he is slammed to the turf by Austin Hiller at the 45-yard line in Chaparral territory. So it's first and 10. Westlake with the lead, 7-3, to 409, and Rawlings is very much in the game. Not wearing 11, wearing number 15. And he is to the left of Ellinger, completing a two-back set in the backfield. Ellinger. Just trying to maintain a complete drive here, and he'll have an opportunity. First down and 10 from his own 45. Two wide receivers to his right, one to his left. Here's the snap on a two-step drop. Ellinger looking, has time, fires over the middle. That pass is caught by Klubnik at the 40-yard line in Cavalier country, and it is a first down and a big one. A 16-yard pickup there. Bailey and Hiller combining on the stop. What a strike from Ellinger to Klubnik good for officially 16 yards and a first down. Fino Pearson has to go off the game. The defensive end was pleading to Wayne Elliott for a face mask. Now looking here to the near side is Rawlings. Rawlings with a spin move and again another hat coming off 
And once again, that's going to be Sam Ochoa's helmet that comes off. He made the tackle. Tighten up the chin straps, boys. That's the third Lake Travis lid to come off. And a timeout has been called. We will take it as well. 3.30 to play in the first half. It's Westlake 7, Cavaliers 3. This is Westlake football. Live coverage of Lake Travis football and Westlake football continues. We get a look at the five state titles in 4A classification for the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell. Of course, Abe Garcia down the sidelines. We'll get to him in just a moment. Jimmy Root, our spotter, and a beautiful perch here on the film deck of Cavalier Stadium gives us our best look at the Battle of the Lakes or the Great Lakes showdown here. Rawlings in the game, coming out of the timeout on second down and eight. The ball marked at the 42-yard line, or the 38-yard line, excuse me. Now Ellinger is tackled from behind, and Fino Pearson is there. Could have been a hold, it could have been a face mask. Either way, John, and a lot of things just not seen by this referee unit. There's a clear, unintentional face mask, yes, but it's certainly the hand of Fino Pearson grazed that face mask and aided in the tackle. Again, not necessarily the biggest penalty in the world, but it's certainly happening. Not getting called, no problem. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the near side right. On third down and nine, Coakley is the lone receiver to the Ellinger's right. The Rawlings in the game at tailback. Now here's Ellinger picking up the blitz nicely. Firing over the middle. That pass is caught by Laycock for a first down at the 26-yard line. What a bullet right there as Andrew Laycock excited about it. Tanner Bush is there to make the stop, but it's a first down catch by Andrew Laycock. A 12-yard reception and a first down. Yeah, and give the credit there to Gallinghouse. Joe Gallinghouse on the left side, the left tackle, picking up the blitzing defensive end, the blitzing linebacker, I should say, and what a job there by Gallinghouse to give Sam the time to find an open receiver for a first down. It's first down and 10 at the Cavalier 26. The zone read handoff to Rawlings. Rawlings just using what is there. A little open real estate down to the 25-yard line. Making the stop is Jason York. And right now he's going to play with a brace on. He'll play with the brace for the rest of the year and probably the rest of his life. But how he came back in May on the first Saturday of spring practice. I watched it happen. He went down and ripped that ACL. And how he is back here on October 24th, the same year, I have absolutely no idea. Doctors, orthopedic surgeons, if you're listening, you probably want to get this guy at least under a microscope and figure out how quickly he was able to heal and to be at 100% contact worthy and playing in this football game. Rolling left, drop, throwing left, and that pass is caught but dropped and Laycock had it for a moment but he dropped it right in front of his own bench at the 20-yard line so it's gonna force a third down and Rawlings will stay on the field and we can't forget about Rawlings ability to throw the ball and when you're talking about him with that right arm he has played quarterback of course he and Jordan Siebert in certain situations a year ago you'd find him throwing the football but that that back leg that push-off leg is the one that ails him right now looks like Rawlings is going to leave the field here in place of Bateman but a timeout's going to be called it'll be called by Westlake we will take it as well 139 to play here in the first half it is Westlake 7 Lake Travis 3 this is Westlake football and we welcome you back to live coverage of Westlake and Lake Travis we will have a visit from the folks monitoring this particular broadcast on Fox Sports Southwest. It's the DQ big game of the week, and why not? 1.39 remaining out of the timeout. Both teams with two left here in the first half. 7-3, Westlake with the lead and the football inside the Lake Travis 25-yard line. Three wide receivers to the right, looking right, throwing right. That pass is incomplete. Could have been Klubnik, could have been Coakley. Either way, it's incomplete, the fourth down, and a decision here because it's within field goal range in Navarro, but it's going to be a long one. We'll have to see if they go for it here on fourth down and nine. We'll see what the play card has for Dodge and what he likes down in distance here. Well, they've had some of these situations, third and nine, third and eight, third and nine situations. They've executed fairly well. So I think they're going to keep the offense on the field, see if they can pick up a first down here from the 25-yard line. And right now, a completion is good. Sets up good field position. The defense has been playing well. Here's fourth and nine, and it's getting loud. Four-man front here for the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Everybody up, nobody down. Nobody with a paw in the dirt, or the turf, I should say. And, and fourth and nine, and the, the whistles didn't blow, but something certainly happened. It looked like maybe we had a whistle malfunction, 
And this is going to be a delay of game. Wayne Elliott telling us all about it. No flag came in. Didn't hear the whistle. But Wayne Elliott calling the delay of game on the Chaparral. So now it's going to create some room back to the 30-yard line. And I don't, I don't think we're going to see Sam Ellinger pooch punt it. You might, but the way the defense is playing, I think Coach Dodge probably feels comfortable with going for it here on 4th and 14. 4th down and 15, the ball marked at the 30-yard line. A back on either side, it's Rawlings and Bateman. Never thought I'd say that this year. Rawlings in the backfield to the left of Ellinger. Laycock split out to the left, two wide receivers, Clubman and Copley. Copley still having trouble picking up the signals from the sidelines. And now a timeout's going to be called by Lake Travis. We will take it as well. Back in 60 seconds, this is Westlake Football. Now we take a look at the stickers on the stars on the Westlake helmet. Again, accountability is how you get one of those. You're graded out, and it's a number system for head coach Todd Dodge and his coaching staff here. And, of course, Matt Kelly with his prowess, his two-punt return for touchdowns, his tackling ability, and all overall leadership. You can see why half of his helmet is covered up with stickers. As we welcome you back to live coverage of Westlake and Lake Travis, the ninth annual Battle of the Lakes. The last time the Chaparral's victorious, well, Justin Tucker's in his third NFL season. He's won a Super Bowl, but he was the kicker for the Chaparrales the last time they won, and they won at Chaparral Stadium. And it was an interception in the end zone on the final play of the game that sealed the deal for the Chaparrales. But six long years and six straight defeats at the hands of the Cavaliers. Four wide receivers to the right of Ellinger. Nobody in the backfield, one to his left. They're going to swing it out to Klubnik. Klubnik now looking to pass back. He heaves it to... And it's almost interception. It was intended for Ellinger on the far side. And a nice job there by Fino Pearson. Reading it, retreating, and just batting the ball down. That play took a little while to develop. It wasn't as sharp as they would like it coming out of the timeout, John. But that certainly gave Lake Travis to something to think about. But hats off to Fino Pearson. As Pearson able to get in the way of that pass. And luckily not intercepted. But yeah. an incomplete pass and a turnover on downs for the Westlake Chaparrales. And it was lucky just for Lee, Reed Klubnick to get that ball away the way James Bailey was bearing down on him. He, he beat the block of Nick Scott, but a good job there by Fino Pearson. Throwback pass there, not successful. Lake Travis with the ball back uh, just under a minute and a half. Like John said, 87 seconds here remaining. Here comes the blitz, and that pass is caught by Willows on the screen. Buchowski, now Rio misses him. Gabe Duran now there to push him out of bounds, but not before. A nice pickup there for Willow. Willows makes it out to the 42-yard line, and it's good for a first down and a 12-yard pickup. Yeah, he puts on a move here about three or four yards downfield right on Steven Rio. No, it was actually, I think that was Bobby Buchowski. Yep. And then hit out of bounds. What a play there. And now, just now a quick rollout pass to Foster. That pass caught out near the 49-yard line. Two-minute drill, high octane up tempo. And now checking into the game is Aidman. So it's second down and seven after the three-yard pickup on the completion to Foster. Two wide receivers each way. Here comes Delira. Now stepping up, running to the right, looking, firing downfield. That pass batted down by Max Mangum. What a play by Max Mangum. Bearing down on the far side receiver was Foster. And how about Max Mangum coming in there, making sure that Foster could not make that grab for the first down. Yeah, great timing there by the safety. Max Mangum coming in, and you see here on the TV replay, Delira looking for a receiver. And we didn't quite see it, but Mangum with a great play there, and it brings up a third and seven from the Lake Travis 46. Three wide receivers to the left of Delira. He's got a back to his left. That's Willow, one to his right. As a receiver, he backs up now, now running. And has room, fires downfield. He's very close to the line of scrimmage. He launches it downfield, and that pass is caught. Caught by Connor Oates. Matt Kelly there on the stop, but a huge pickup as Connor Oates, with coverage all over him with Matt Kelly, somehow, somehow comes down with the football at the 18-yard line. And very fortunate there. Dom DeLira had an automatic first down, and had he run that football. A 36-yard pickup and a quick strike to the outside, and that pass intended for Malik Barkley on the outside. Just a quick curl route, and it's incomplete. A 36-yard pickup and a first down to the completion to Connor Oates. And right now, you got to be thinking that it's a good weapon to have in Satterfield, who's already drilled a 50-yard field goal. Now you're well in his range. The ball marked at the Chaparral 18-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Willows the lone setback to the left out of the gun. A little early movement, no call. Pass caught by Oates. Over the middle, inside the six, down to the five-yard line. Kelly on the stop. 
and it's a first and goal for Lake Travis, and they are within striking distance running this two-minute drill to perfection. 45 seconds left, and now Lake Travis first and goal from the five. Three wide receivers lined up to the right, and now a timeout will be called. Let's go ahead and go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Abe, just breakneck pace as a timeout's been called. When we come back, it'll be second and goal to live play, but how about that, Abe? A lot of activity going on as far as Lake Travis, their best drive of the night. Well, sometimes when you don't get off offensively, sometimes you need a little bit of a break. Westlake wasn't able to convert on third down and fourth down on that trick play. West Lake Travis got a little bit of life there. Crowd got into it, a couple of completions there, and a big completion down at the 20-yard line. And now they're, you know, close to going into the half with the lead. Westlake here has to bear down. Coach Salazar right now, and he's in front of me talking to his group right now, getting them fired up. They want to win here. We'll keep him to a field goal. This is a, a huge opportunity here on first down and goal from the six-yard line after the 36-yard pickup to Oates and then another catch by Oates over the middle. Set up this first and goal try here. Westlake would call their second timeout. They've got one left, as does Lake Travis. Willow will flank Delira on the left. Both quarterbacks wearing the number four. Three wide receivers to the right. Now one going in motion here to the near side. That's Cade Green. Now out of the shotgun. Here comes the blitz firing towards the end zone. That pass is almost intercepted. Oh, my. Oh, just a huge opportunity there for Hudson Peterson. Peterson had his mitts on it, and that would have been a huge play. But nonetheless, it's incomplete, and it's second down and goal here as Hudson Peterson missing a huge opportunity there to pick it off. And I just don't get really the trajectory of this pass either. You got to throw this ball high up in the air for Colton Bailey, the backup receiver, standing 6'5, 175. He towers over Hudson Peterson. Fader out. Yep. 31 seconds remaining here in the half. 7 3 lead for Westlake. They hand it off on the jet screen and wrapped up in the backfield. A huge hit by Hudson Hall. And a tackle for loss back to the 12. And a jet screen to Willow, who lined up in the slot right and. That's a sandwich you don't want to be in the middle of, and Hudson Hall, the bread on that bad boy, as he wrapped him up and then came in on the back end of the play. I believe it was Duran, and wow, what a play. It happened right in front of Abe Garcia. Abe, tell me what it sounded like. Well, these guys, like Coach, I was telling you earlier, Coach Salazar has challenged these guys on that last timeout, making sure that they don't get in the end zone. Hudson Peterson, I mean, that ball was right there. Like, and like John said, you throw a fade route, that's an easy touchdown for Lake Travis. Quarterback missed that one. Let's see if Westlake in here can hold down on third and goal. I said fade route, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. No, it's cool, that, that, but that's exactly right. John, John basically and I were talking about it really quickly off mic. And when you have a six foot five receiver in the back corner of the end zone, it's six foot five on five foot ten, and you got to go back corner. And not too sure what happened there, but to give credit to Colton Bailey, Bailey actually was there on the play. He realized that the pass wasn't going necessarily the right direction. And at the very last second we saw on the replay, he kind of put his right hand on the forearm of Hudson Peterson and just affected his strength and his ability to close his fingers around the football. And that was enough. Third down and goal. The ball marked at the 11-yard line officially. The ball right in the middle of the field. Four down front here and now jumping. Rolling right, looking right, firing over the middle. That pass is incomplete. But a flag is down and this is going to be offsides on Westlake. It was a free play. And it was intended for Foster in the back of the end zone who could not make the grab. 22 seconds remain. And it's going to be... And we'll replay third down. Bobby Buchowski was there on the hit of Delira. Yeah, Brecken Hager was offsides too. Must have been a hard count down, down there by Delira. So third down and five here. Third and goal from the five. Big play here. The ball right between the hash marks and Lake Travis trying to get in the end zone and take the game's first lead for the Cavaliers. Two wide receivers to the right. One here to the near side left. Delira, and now a timeout's going to be called, I believe, by Westlake. That is their final timeout. And, John, just going through the down and distance here on third and goal from the five, you do have an opportunity, obviously, on fourth and goal to kick a field goal. You've got 22 seconds, and obviously Lake Travis with one time or no timeouts remaining. So you've got to be able to throw the ball, and then you've got to be able to go out and set up your field goal unit. 50 yards away, Brandon 
we've seen the the field goal kicking ability of Satterfield so he's in point-blank range but you got to get six here this is a big momentum into the first half because re remember Lake Travis gets the ball coming out of the third quarter so if they can convert here on a touchdown it's huge momentum going into the locker room yeah it's big for both of these teams and you can almost bet that Westlake is going to bring some pressure here uh, you know that Brecken Hager is going to be down on that defensive line watch those linebackers watch those safeties there's going to be pressure from somewhere. Barrett Chambers came up with a huge sack earlier in the ball game. Watch him roaming near that line of scrimmage. We'll see what Westlake does defensively. Is like Travis looks like they're going to come out with four wide with Willows in the backfield. Willow will be in the backfield. He'll be to the right of Delira. Delira wants some crowd noise. Three wide receivers to the right. Now going in motion here. Now cutting back is Cade Green. Here's the snap on third and goal from five. Now rolling right, looking right, still looking, backing up, now throwing across his body, across the field. That pass is caught for a touchdown. It's caught. A broken play, improvisation to Colton Bailey. And Bailey has the grab and the score. For Bailey, it's his third touchdown reception. And it's a huge play. A cross-body throw, a cross-field throw. And just like that, Delira and Bailey hook up for the score. Yeah, all the way back to the other side of the field, and Colton Bailey just got lost in the defensive secondary and, and now, a nice play there by Dom Delira and now Delira firing up the crowd he wanted noise before the play well happy Gilmore action wanting noise in a normally quiet venue if you will when you're trying to concentrate but he wanted noise on for the extra point is Brandon Satterfield the snap down the kick up and the kick is good so with that Lake Travis taking the lead into Late seconds of the second quarter. It's Lake Travis 10, West Lake 7 with 13.7 seconds left in the first half. I'm Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell. And down on the sidelines, of course, Abe Garcia will have most likely a very short interview with Todd Dodge. As no doubt he's trying to figure out how Lake Travis executed that two-minute drill to perfection. But hats off to, really, when you think about it, Hats off to Tony Salazar for pitching that shutout during the process. They made Lake Travis play that one out big time. But on the Reds Barbershop scoring drive, nine plays, 70 yards, took 114 off the clock, a five-yard touchdown pass from Dominic Delira to Colton Bailey, Bailey's third touchdown reception of the season. And for Dominic Delira, that is his 12th touchdown pass. And they did all of that with only one timeout, too. What a job there by Lake Travis to go. 70 yards on the on the drive and to take the lead going into the locker room but still Westlake Lake Travis both these teams are going to go in the locker room with some things to work on but also a lot of confidence coming into the second half both teams this has been a very well played ball game a short first half but a very well played first half especially defensively it'll be Satterfield to kick off here with his right leg back deep to receive Klubnik, Laycock and Scott they'll pop it up Coming over and making the grab at the 20-yard line is Scott. Scott now angling towards the middle of the field, picking up a blocker. Now sheds one tackler, stutter steps at the right hash mark and goes down at the 23-yard line. The clock will stop with five Thank seconds remaining, and most likely here, Austin Hiller on the stop there. Nice job. Brewer there as well at the bottom end of that play on Nick Scott out to the 22-yard line. And if I'm Westlake, I just take a knee here and, and jog to the locker room and talk about it. But a 10-7 lead, certainly nothing insurmountable at best. But Lake Travis just sucking the air out of the football. The two big throws to Connor Oates. The highlights of those drives, including the big one for 36, John. It preceded the next pass that set up shop inside the 10-yard line that set up those first and goal tries. And finally, Lake Travis gets into the end zone for the first time tonight. And they take the lead 10-7. to seven. Five seconds from district play. And we welcome you back to halftime stats here. Totals from the first half. Eight first downs for Westlake to Lake Travis's six. 102 yards through the air for LT. Seven on the ground. A total of 109 yards. 119 for Westlake. 42 on the ground. 77 through the air. One turnover for Lake Travis. The interception that turned in to points. Hudson Hall with the pick. Three plays later. Hall, Duran, and Hager blocking for Ellinger, who scored 
And of course, the two minute drill in under 90 seconds as Dom DeLira fired to Colton Bailey for a touchdown with 13 seconds remaining in the first half. John, it's been a whale of a football game. A lot of slugging it out, duking it out along the defensive and offensive line. And right now, it's going to be about who performs in the first seven minutes of this second half. Coming out of the third quarter, Lake Travis will have the football. And both teams can point to missed opportunities in the first half, but Lake Travis. We had the holding penalty on the kick return for a touchdown. Called that one back. The Wesley defense made a stop. And then you had the great play by Manolo Gonzalez, the punter in the end zone. When the snap got behind him to get the ball off to the 40-yard line, the Wesley defense made another stop. So those are points that could have gone on the board for Lake Travis but didn't. And that nice two-minute drive got points on the board, a touchdown on the board, and now it's 10-7 Lake Travis. Navarro, a line drive and a very well-kicked kickoff. It'll back out of the back of the end zone for the touchback, and that's going to be an equalizer that Westlake will enjoy just not only now in big games like this, but in would-be playoff games where they can eliminate the return game. So for the Lake Travis Cavaliers, from our perspective, they will move left to right here in the third quarter. They wear the black uniforms with the uh, white numerals, the black trousers with the black helmet and the interlocking L and T logo on the side with the five stars indicating the five titles in for a play. Obviously five consecutive state titles as Hank Carter, part of that tradition as well. He had the last two. And two wide receivers will line up here to the right. Two wide receivers to the left as well. The Cavaliers up three points, 10-7, on the first play of the third quarter. Joe Taylor, John Nidelli, Garcia with you here on Sports Talk AM 1300 at the zone. And Hudson Hall on the hit on Abe Willows. Willows just falling forward for about a yard and a half, maybe two, and it's second down and eight. And they come with just a standard run play right at the gut. Yeah, <clears throat> nice play there by Hudson Hall. These linebackers really came to play today. They have played an outstanding football game. This Westlake defense, other than that two-minute drive that they gave up, near-perfect ball. We welcome all of you back to the second half on the Westlake Chap app. The handoff goes to Willows, and Willows dropped again. Brecken Hager getting in tight off that initial block and making the tackle. Everybody's settled down now, and it's uh, no gain on the play, and it's going to bring up third down and long here. About an eight-and-a-half-yard clip to achieve the first down marker at the 35-yard line. So it's third down, and we're inside 12 minutes to play here in the third quarter. 10-7, Lake Travis with the lead. Got a clock issue, and so yes, we do. officials timeout. Yeah, we have a clock operation issue here as the clock went back to 12 minutes, and we'll have to reset that. And they still haven't reset it. It's still reading 11.59. They're not going to allow this to snap until they fix the clock. And there should be about 11.22, 11.23 on the clock right now. And it still reads 11.59. So they're going to say 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So huh. it, it actually expired a little bit more than that. So Wayne Elliott calling for the scoreboard operator to reset the clock to 10 and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter and that is what happens and now how, we are underway 10 and a half would be the number but. well it, it's what wayne elliott wants and when he wants it we give it to him three wide receivers on the third down play here comes brecken hager they try to pick up the screen it works to perfection but he dropped the wow. ball he dropped the ball and uh, Hudson Hall came in and swiped it away. They're not going to call a flag on Hudson Hall. That was dangerous as Hudson could have picked up a personal foul penalty after the uh, ball had been dropped. And uh, you got to give credit to Hudson there for coming in and making the play because they didn't know if he fumbled it. And so the, continuing the play, the catch was made by Willows, and he just dropped it immediately. So he never had control, but Hudson couldn't see it, and he came in and swiped it away. No flag, everything's good, and the defense holds on the initial drive of the Lake Travis Cavaliers here in the third quarter. So Westlake will get the ball back here. There's the snap, and Delira gets the punt away. Matt Kelly waiting for it. He'll field it at the 45-yard line. He scored from here at this yardage point. Now he gets around right in, trying to move out of the way, and just falls forward and accepts it. Nice job there by Roller. Roller making the hit on Matt Kelly, not allowing him to get to the edge and get to the outside, right outside the right hash mark, John, as Matt Kelly was searching for room on the outside. And chalk up another missed opportunity for Lake Travis on that third down. Abe Willows had all sorts of room to run. That was a perfectly set up screen pass as Westlake brought Max Mangum from that side on a blitz. But Abe Willows dropped that football. Now Westlake gets it right at midfield with a big opportunity to cut into this lead. 50-yard line, the right at midfield in between the L and the T here at Cavalier Stadium. Now the first pass is complete to Laycock. No, it is low. A lot of room there, and Bush gave Laycock a ton of real estate and a ton of respect there. He had an easy grab at the 45, but the pass was low. So it's incomplete, second down and 10 for midfield. And Sam has a little bit of an over-the-top 
delivery. So that ball sometimes comes out with a downward spiral and it has a tendency to dive towards the ground as it nears the receiver. And that's why Andrew Laycock misjudged that football. He was 7-11 for 77 yards in the first half. Had the rushing touchdown. Now here comes the blitz. He rolls out of it. Loses the football. Now he's still on his feet and he goes down at the 39-yard line. James Bailey taking over and dropping Sam Ellinger back near the 39-yard line. A huge loss of 11 yards, and it will be a fumble and a recovery by Ellinger. So the keeping possession will the Westlake Chaparrales, but unfortunately a huge mark off there back to the 21-yard line on the second sack of the game for the Lake Travis defense, and this time it's James Bailey. Yeah, James Bailey was somewhat neutralized in that first half by the Westlake offense. Sean Rawlings in the game. Watch for maybe a screen pass here to Rawlings. Try to get him in space. He competes a three a trio to the right side. Now looking, firing downfield, one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's to Coakley, and it's overthrown. Coakley intended receiver downfield right around the 20-yard line, and it was overthrown, giving Chase downfield. Nice job there defensively as it looks like it was Grant Foster in that backup role. So now Foster playing both both ways on the corner. He's a backup. So 9-13 remains, and both teams in their opening possession of the third quarter in the second half come up empty. They'll punt it away. Manolo Gonzalez will punt it away to Roller, who is waiting patiently at the 24-yard line. Joe Taylor, John Nidell, and, of course, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines, Tyler Martin. And now here comes the rush. Manolo gets it away, and now Roller will field it, and there's a flag down. Roller here at the 35, out to the 40, to the 45, cuts it down the right sideline, puts one stutter step move, but can't get around the Manolo Gonzalez. He's the punter, and Manolo Gonzalez came up and hit it, but there's a flag right at the catch zone at the 31-yard line. So the flag came out immediately as Roller caught the football at the 30. And it, they're waving off the flag. So there was no penalty on the play. So it's a good return. And the second time, Roller, the second time, the first time they took away a touchdown on a hold. This time they pick up the flag, and it's still a good return to the 38-yard line in Chaparral territory. And what Wayne Elliott said, it was meant to be a beanbag. They throw the beanbag at the spot of the catch by the punt returner, and the referee just, the uh, one of the referees down there made a mistake on which, which thing to grab out of his pocket. He grabbed the flag. As I was wondering, I didn't see anything there, any kind of illegal block. So now Lake Travis set up with great field position with an opportunity to extend this lead. So Dom Delure out for the second time. Now Barkley going in motion. They opt for the jet screen. He cuts it back to the right, trying to look for running room. And Hudson Hall will have nothing to say about that except go down, uh, Barkley. And uh, Barkley goes down right around the 41-yard line. It's a loss of two. I believe that is the third tackle behind the line of scrimmage for Hudson Hall in this ball game. An impressive effort from all three senior linebackers, but Hudson Hall wrapping him up for the two yard loss on the jet screen that went awry, and Barkley had to cut it back from the left to the right. Here's second down and 13. Delira back to pass, fires over the middle. That pass is caught and juggled momentarily, but they held on, did the Lake Travis receiver, and it's Medina that makes the grab down to the 25 yard line. Max Mangum on the stop, and it's good for a first down yard and a 16 yard pickup and a first down. Two wide receivers to the left, two receivers here to the near side right. Willow staying in as a tailback. Delira calling for the ball. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up nicely. A pump fake now thrown to the end zone. Hudson Peterson and making the grab. Peterson was there on the defense, and it's caught for a score. Touchdown for the Lake Travis Cavaliers. And what a job by Malik Barkley as he beat Peterson, and Barkley gets the 25-yard touchdown grab. And the first score of the second half goes to the Cavaliers. They add to the lead. What a beautiful throw and an even better catch to the outstretched hands of Malik Barkley. Wow, what a throw, what a catch. Touchdown, Lake Travis. And Hudson Peterson was beat there, but he was still in relatively good position. But like you said, that was just a perfectly placed ball to Malik Barkley right on the hands in the corner of the end zone and a huge touchdown for Lake Travis. Bailey to hold for Satterfeld. And this one is up and good. So with 8.08 to play in the third quarter, Westlake sees a three-point lead turn into a 10-point lead. It's Lake Travis 17, Westlake 7. This is Westlake football. For 100... But we welcome you back live to Cavalier Stadium. The Reds Barbershop scoring drive, three play, 38 yard drive, took 52 seconds. It was all sparked by that big return by Roller and the 38 yard drive capped by a 25 yard touchdown reception. 
the second touchdown pass of the night for Dom DeLira. And DeLira at this time connecting with Malik Barkley. The red scoring drive brought to you by Red's Barbershop, 1717 West 6th Street. And here's Satterfield to uh, kick it off into the night. It'll be returned by Reed Klubnick inside the goal line. Reed at the 10. Now, no, it's Laycock. And Laycock now retreating to the far side, and he gets nowhere out to the 13-yard line. And at this point in time, John, you're just trying to generate some sort of momentum. John Brewer making the stop. And at that point, if you're two yards deep, if you're Laycock, I just go ahead and back it up and take a knee and take the yardage out to the 20-yard line, start fresh. Yeah, 25-yard line there on a touchback on a kickoff. Yeah, so bad. that's just, you can't afford that kind of mistake. You cannot afford down 10 in the third quarter to put your offense at the 13-yard line. Westlake must respond here, just not executing on offense. You saw the, the Chaparrales get the ball on the last drive right at the 50-yard line, took a big sack on second down. And Lake Travis comes back with great field position and takes advantage for a 10-point lead. From the right hash, it looks like Rawlings is to the right of Ellinger here on first down and 10 from their own 13-yard line. Now just a zone read, the handoff will go to Rawlings. Rawlings out past the 15 to the 17-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be second down and six. John Brewer on the stop. We're seeing a lot of Rawlings here early on. And when we talked to Coach Dodge earlier this week on Wednesday for our normal weekly conversation, John, he said simply that John, that uh, Rawlings was going to be available. Didn't say anything about him getting a ton of playing time, which is the case here tonight. On second down and six, now Rawlings to the left of Ellinger. Two wide receivers each way. Ellinger gets the snap back deep to throw. And now that pass is caught at the 30-yard line. There was contact from Roller on Klubnik, but Klubnik somehow still makes the grab. And he lets Roller know about it. Gets him a little shove as he gets up, as there was clearly contact before the ball got there, but give credit to Rolling or give credit there to Ellinger to hanging tough in the pocket and completing it out to Reed Klubnik. And that was a 12-yard pickup at a first down. From the 31, they roll it right. QB sweep here to the near side. Turn in the corner at the 36-yard line, and he steps out of bounds. Does Ellinger at the 38-yard line. So good blocking there on the near side left. Laycock really getting out in in space there and delivering a key block to spring Ellinger around the right side. A seven-yard pickup there, and it's second down and three. Good down and distance here to open up the playbook. Two wide receivers to the right, one here to the near side left. A back on either side, Rawlings to the left. Bateman to the right of Ellinger looking back to the sidelines, their head coach for the call. 706, 17 to 7. Westlake trailing by 10, launching it to the far right. That pass is caught, and eluding the tackle there is Coakley. Coakley with a Madden move. That tackle is out of bounds. Give him 15. Bailey didn't like it. Bailey juked, and what a catch and better run by Chase Coakley. A huge catch into Lake Travis territory. It's a 25, or no, a 15-yard penalty, but it's going to be 15 more. And Chase Coakley just keeps getting better and better, and take your pick. It's either a face it's, mask or a horse collar. It's a horse collar. It's also a late hit because he was well out of bounds when he took him down. Big play there by Chase Coakley. Like I said, he just keeps getting better and better as his junior season goes along. Picks up a huge first down, and then the 15-yard penalty moves it all the way inside the 30 at the 28. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Tempo up inside. Seven minutes to play third quarter. Shaps with the ball after 30 yards of offense there. And now Ellinger's going to go down in a big sack. This one actually is going to come all the way back to around the 38-yard line. John Brewer in there along with Fenimore. It's going to be spotted there at the 32, so a four-yard loss. So only a four-yard loss as it looked like Wayne Elliott was coming in at the end of the play just to get the ball, but they spotted at the 32. Forward progress halted there, so it's not as bad. They avoid the huge sack. So it'll be second down and 14 after the loss of four. Scott Laycock to the left. Klubnik in the slot right along with Coakley. Rawlings in the backfield with Ellinger on second and 14 from the Cavalier 32. Ellinger looking downfield. Still has time. Now stepping up in the pocket. Has nowhere to go and he is absolutely blown up at the 35-yard line. And it's Sam Ochoa leading the charge there on the hit by Ellinger. Good coverage downfield for Lake Travis. And this Lake Travis defense keeps getting TFLs. Tackles for loss against this Westlake offense. Putting Westlake in a really tough situation now. Third down and 18 from the 36. Westlake needing to respond with just under six minutes left in the third quarter. Down 10 as John Rollins is in the game, as is Nick Scott in the backfield as well. So they got speed everywhere. Coakley to the right. Two receivers here to the near side left in Klubnik and Laycock. 
5.34 to play in the third quarter. Third down and 18. Now changing the play just a little bit, and it looks like a timeout has been called. We will go ahead and take it as well. It's Westlake's first timeout. Again, 5.26 to play third quarter. Lake Travis leading Westlake 17-7. This is Westlake football. Welcome you back out of the timeout. Third and 18 from the Lake Travis 36-yard line. Ellinger back to pass. Still in the pocket. Stepping up. He's going to run out of real estate. And he just cannot find anybody downfield. And Fino Pearson in the backfield as Ellinger goes down. And on this drive, Ellinger just has not had the ability to escape. He's hung out in the pocket, just holding on to the football. And it, the, the pocket just coll collapses around him, John. Yeah, and at some point, though, especially on a third and 18, you just got to get rid of that football. Sam's taking a few sacks here as he lines up now. Expect a pooch kick here. On fourth and 21, as they lose three yards on that quarterback sack. Bateman steps up, backing up his Ellinger, expecting the pooch punt, and here it comes. And it's a nice one, kind of a spiral, and it's fielded on the fly at the 12-yard line. Roller now breaking left. Roller has some room, but nice play there on the far sideline as Reed Klubnik just racing over and hog-tying Roller and not allowing for the big return. So Lake Travis will get the ball back after 30 yards of field position given to the Westlake Chaparrales. It was a 15-yard catch and a nifty one at that by Chase Coakley and then a late hit out of bounds or a horse collar. Either way, cost him another 15 yards and nothing going after that as the drive stalled. Two sacks in the drive after that to first down pickup and the penalty was charged to Lake Travis on the late hit out of bounds to Bailey. Lake Travis just holding serve there. Good coverage downfield. Really the difference in this ball game. The receivers have not been open. And there's some adjustments to make here as Lake Travis leads 17 to 7. The 25 yard touchdown pass to Malik Barkley. The lone score in this third quarter. Joe Taylor, John Nidell, A. Garcia down on the sideline. Now Bar Bar Barkley going in motion, but whistles fly before. And it's going to be a delay of game on Lake Travis. So that'll cost them five yards. Let's go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Abe, I know the mood is quiet right now. Actually, we'll wait for that. And Abe kind of just uh, moving in a closer position so we can hear him a little bit better. It'll be first down and 15. Four and a half minutes to play here. 4.33 to be exact. You're listening to live coverage of Westlake and Lake Travis, the ninth annual Battle of the Lakes. Blitz shown here, and here comes Barrett Chambers. They pick it up nicely, but there's Gabe Duran. Now the pass is complete out to the 28-yard line. Now falling forward past the 30, out to the 33-yard line is Patrick Medina. Ryan Marcus there on the stop, and he gets out to the 34-yard line. So it's an 11-yard catch, but it's still second down. When you bring a blitz like that, you know Don Delir is going to try to get that ball out quickly. You want tight coverage there on the outside right there. Ryan Marcus just a little too far off the receiver. Nice play there by Delira. Second and four, and once again, the jet screen faked, and now Delira's just going to run around left end. He's headed for the sticks, uh -oh. and he's just going to step out of bounds, and Hold he is grabbing that hamstring, and that is huge. He is grabbing that left hamstring, and Delira's going to jog back. Not too sure if it's a cramp or a strain or a pull. He's fine. He's shaking it off, and, of course, you really can't credit Hank Carter, who in his fifth season is 57 and 7. He's got an able-bodied quarterback in Charlie Brewer who has played significant time this season. But no dice here as Delir is going to run the option and the ball is loose. And Westlake trying to pile on it. The ball is still loose, but it looks like Lake Travis has it at the 28-yard line. And a good job there by Abe Willows. Johnny on the spot finding the football immediately and covering it up. He just made a huge play as three chaparrales were converging on the football. And from talking to a few of the Westlake players, also some people from Lake Travis, they all said that Charlie Brewer is really not a downgrade. He has played good football this season. And the way that Dom DeLear went off to the sideline, the way he ran that option right there, he might be a, Brewer might be a guy you might see come in this football game. It's a loss of 15 on the play. Now DeLear rolling that pass caught at the 38-yard line and a brilliant play by Matt Kelly. It's caught by Cade Green, and Matt Kelly is there to make the stop immediately after the catch was made. Yeah, DeLear looks good in the pocket right there. Stepped into that throw. Nice throw. You just might not see the running ability because on that play where he ran towards the sideline, he had a lot of room to run. Very fortunate there that he only picked up a few yards. Well, they picked up 10 yards on that pass to Green. Cade Green making the grab, and 
John, you said it. Huge play on third and ten from the Lake Travis 39-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the near side right. Willow stays back and Delira now rolling here to the near side. Has time. Chunks it downfield towards the left. Wide open receiver. And that pass is caught by Barkley. Malik Barkley left all alone. Ryan Marcus was there, but he was about three yards away from the play. And what a throw by Dominic Delira from the right side of the field to the left side of the field, finds Barkley for a huge pickup, and that one is good for an 18-yard pickup, and more importantly, a first down into Westlake territory, down to the Chaparral 42-yard line. 2.22, clock moving here, Delira back to pass, here comes the rush, has a man downfield, and that pass is caught, and it is inbounds. What a catch on the near sidelines is Grant Foster. And it seems like whatever happened to that hamstring is not affecting Delira's ability to put the ball wherever the heck he wants to. First down yardage just outside the red zone. A 21-yard pickup and a first down on the completion to Grant Foster. And the Cavaliers are on the move up 17-7. to Two wide receivers here to the near side. Rolling right, looking right, firing right. That pass is juggled and caught by Medina. Medina on his feet at the five, and Barrett Chambers slows him down at the five-yard line, and Chambers knocks him down and saves a touchdown catch for Medina. It's all about time in the pocket right now for Dominique Delira. They're rolling him out of the pocket to get him more time, but he's having all sorts of time back there, able to find receivers that are getting open in the secondary. Up-tempo offense here, and it's first and goal from the four-yard line. Now, handoff, Willows. Willows met Mangum. Mangum in the backfield along with Duran, and he goes down back at the six-yard line. So it's a loss of one, second and goal, and if you're Westlake, you got to hold here. Hold it to a field goal. Keep it within a two-score game. And remember last year... Westlake went into the fourth quarter with a 13-point lead. That's what it could be if Westlake's defense can hold here because a 17-point lead is a lot different. You're talking about three scores needed in the fourth quarter for Westlake. Got to hold here on second down. Second and goal from the six-yard line on the right hash. Two wide receivers each way. Foster in the slot right now. Barkley on the jet screen. They fake it. Here's Delira. Delira running right. Has some room. Drilled, but he drags two defenders into the end zone. And it's a touchdown for Dominic Delira. What hamstring. Touchdown. Dom Delira. Touchdown what? Touchdown Lake Travis. Yeah, it doesn't look to be bothering him right now. Not limping at all. Maybe it was just a little bit of a cramp issue. But a huge drive there for the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Come out in this third quarter. And they have absolutely dominated on both sides of the football. Much like they did last year in the fourth quarter. They did it here in the third. And now with a big 16-point lead. Looking to make it 17. And Westlake has to respond now. Out of the hold of Colton Bailey. Knocking it through is Saturn Field. And with 112 remaining here in the third quarter, it is Lake Travis 24, Chaparral 7. This is Westlake football. We walk you back. 112 remaining here in the third quarter on the Reds Barbershop scoring drive. Nine play, 72 yard drive, capped by a six yard touchdown run by Dominic Delira. Took 323 off the clock. Here's the kickoff by Satterfield. And it's fielded by Scott at the 15 yard line. Scott at the 20, out to the 25, and picks up yardage out to the 27 yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines at Abe Garcia. Abe, got to find a way to get something going on offense right now. Well, yeah, Joe, and that also starts with conversions. Keeping extending drives. It's something that was hampering Westlake in the first half. They were able to get away with defense was playing well. Now the defense has been on the field quite a bit. They're a little bit gassed. Now they find themselves down 17. If you talk about the biggest drive of the game for Westlake, whether it's on offense or defense, it's this one right here. Abe down on the sidelines and first and 10 from the 27-yard line here. The ball marked in the left hash mark. Joe Taylor, John Nidell, Abe Garcia with you live on Sports Talk AM 1300 of the Zone, the Westlake Shap app, and westlakenation.com. We thank all of you for listening. 24 to 7. Let's go, Westlake down 17. Now, once again, trying to wrap it up and doing a good job there on the near side is Fino Pearson. Pearson has played a whale of a game from that defensive end spot and wrapped up Ellinger once again. It's a one yard gain. And Hutchings on the stop as well. Actually, about a two-yard gain out to the 29-yard line. The ball just inside, or excuse me, a loss of three on the play. Backs it up to the 27-yard line, or the 24-yard line. Offensively, this looks just like the Bowie game, the way the offensive line's really getting pushed in on Sam Ellinger. Second down and 13, ball marked at the 24-yard line. Rolling right, and now Ellinger stopping, and now looking downfield, still runs out of room. It just does not have anywhere to go. John Brewer, another sack. 
on Sam Ellinger. Ellinger has nowhere to go. He's looking downfield, doesn't have any room, and just can't make up his mind whether or not to run. And we're seeing a lot of confusion on the Westlake offensive line and on the offensive play calls as well. That's a loss of four yards, and this looks like to be the final play of the third quarter, and that will do it. So after three quarters of play, the Cavaliers put up 14 points coming out of the locker room, and they lead 24 to seven. Coming up next, the fourth quarter from the ninth annual Battle of the Lakes. And right now, Lake Travis all over Westlake, 24 to seven. This is Westlake football. We welcome you back to the fourth quarter, 24 to seven, Westlake trailing Lake Travis. And Westlake with a huge opportunity here on third and long. You gotta try to find a way on third and long. Really, it's been Andrew Laycock that's had that opportunity to convert. Now they back up everybody trying to defend the first down. Here's the snap. The handoff will go to Rawlings. Rawlings is trying to angle his way up the middle, and he is swallowed up by a gaggle of Cavaliers. Leading the charge is Roller, and Rawlings able to get out past the 25-yard line to the 27. So it's the original line of scrimmage, if you can believe that. And now Westlake will have to punt it away, and Manolo Gonzalez has been a busy, busy man this evening. Roller stepping back and having a quick chat with the back judge. He's right there at the 44-yard line. And Hudson Hall, you can see him there on the sidelines on the television broadcast. You can say he is not liking this, trying to affect change. And right now, a big play on special teams or a turnover on defense is really the Chaparral's only hope to try to spark something. Here comes Gonzalez's punt. It's a high, spiraling punt. And it'll be fielded by Roller right at the 50-yard line. And how about that for concentration? <laughs> Chris Roller, that ball fell like a rock right at the 49-yard line. And it will be placed at the Cavalier 49-yard line just shy of midfield. And at this point, the way the offense is, uh, the lack of execution on that side of the ball, this Westlake defense is going to have to come up and make a play. There's going to have to be some kind of good fortune happen early in this fourth quarter to switch to change the tides of this game because the momentum clearly on the side of Lake Travis and something the ball's got to bounce Westlake's way at some point you saw that fumble on the last drive that Abe Willows was able to get on top of and Lake Travis was able to get a first down off of that Westlake's defense got to stand here so in the fourth quarter they'll move from our right to our left And now the handoff will go to Willows. Willows just angling towards the right side, and he's able to pick up positive yardage as he goes around the right end inside the 50 into Westlake territory. And he gets four yards. It'll be second down and six from the right hash mark. The ball marked at the 47-yard line in Chaparral territory. Two wide receivers up tempo is still the, the offensive choice. And now coming in is Brecken Hager, and along with Daniel Aben, they absolutely destroy Dominic Delira throwing him down like a rag doll at the Westlake 49-yard line. It's a loss of two on the play. Brings the ball back just inside the left hash mark, and a loss will set up third down and eight. And quickly, Delira is up and looking towards the sidelines. Mac Humble is in the ball game as a slot receiver. Third down and eight. Three wide receivers to the right of the quarterback, Dom Delira. One here to the near side left. Here comes the blitz. Fires to the left. That pass is caught. And right now, Stephen Rio having a heck of a time trying to guard Malik Barkley. Stephen Rio on the stop, but it's a first down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. And those are the kinds of third downs that Westlake needs to try to get Lake Travis off the field. They haven't been able to do it. It's a pickup of nine yards and a first down. So and last year, it was number 19, Dominic Packer, who really killed Westlake, and it was one of the main reasons why Lake Travis won that football game. Right now, I've been really impressed by the sophomore, Malik Barkley. This receiving core is really the strength of this Cavalier team. Two wide receivers each way. Delira back to pass, still looking. Happy feet, flag thrown. That pass caught by Cade Green. Green makes the grab at the 30-yard line. Pick your chaparral, but leading the charge there is Steven Rio. Rio making the stop, and this is going to be a penalty. We'll go down to... Wayne Elliott, our referee in charge. Yeah, gonna be a chop block here, a high-low block right there on the inside on Hudson Hall. Gonna be a personal foul for Lake Travis. So it's a 15-yard penalty, and that's why I'm saying, man, you know, if you don't want to do this analyst stuff anymore, you can certainly go down there. I'm sure after last year, and of course a questionable NFL call on the replacement refs, I'm sure Wayne Elliott would love to have you. <laughs> would love to have you. You saw that before it happened. 
What do they pay? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not as good as me. That's for sure. First down, <laughs> it'll be first down again, but now the distance 25 yards. The ball just outside the Cavalier 46-yard line, just inside that left hash. A trio of receivers to the right of Delira. One receiver to the left, and he has a back. Willows to his right on first down and 25. And this time the pass is complete once again to Medina. Medina makes the grab and just works his way back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard shy. Buchowski along with Kelly there combining on the stop. So it's about a 15-yard pickup. And it gets the ball back, make it a 14-yard pickup to the 40-yard line in Chaparral territory. Ball marked at the left hash on second and 11. 8.45 to play in the ball game. And right now, Cavaliers trying to seal it up here. Four down front, now false start as the switch there puts Hudson Hall into the uh, defensive backfield, joining Gabe Duran, spooked the offensive line. So it's five more yards for the Westlake defense as Lake Travis goes backwards to the Chaparral 45-yard line. And this second half has really been a deadly combination for the Westlake defense of A, not getting enough pressure on Dom DeLira, the same amount of pressure they were able to get in the first half and B, receivers are really running open in the secondary, and Dom DeLear has really just been picking apart the Westlake defense here in the second half, completely different from the first half. Second and 16. Three wide receivers to the right, one here to the near side left. Here comes the jailhouse blitz, and Willows makes the grab, but picking it up nicely is Rio. Rio was really the last man standing, and there's a nice tackle here on the near side. And it's a late hit, but it's just a... Good play there by Elias Garcia. As the receiver there, Barkley went down, but uh, Garcia hit him because uh, I think Barkley kept running. That's so. a loss of four. It'll be third down and 20, and a timeout's going to be taken here, I believe, by Lake Travis. Let's go ahead and take it as well. 8 09 to play in the ball game. It is Lake Travis 24, Westlake 7. This is Westlake football. Uh we welcome you back to live action here, and it looks like Dominic Delira is going to be sacked all the way back near the 30-yard line, and it's uh, Elias Garcia. Garcia able to track down Dom Delira, and it's a huge loss of 19 yards back to the 30-yard line, and a quick trigger was Wayne Elliott's crew getting us back into live play out of the timeout by Lake Travis. They have two left, Westlake with all three, or excuse me, Westlake with all three, at least they should have, or should, they should have two, and Lake Travis should have two, but the board reads that Westlake has one timeout. That's not the case, but again, the big loss of 19 is a big field position aid here for the Westlake Chaparrales, as now Delira will punt it away on fourth and 41. Matt Kelly retreating to the football. He's going to make the grab at the 31. Now Matt Kelly just falling down at the 35-yard line. And Westlake will take over here, and they will do their best to try to get on the board. Right now, time is of the essence, 7-16 to play in the ball game, And the Cavaliers with a convincing 17-point lead. It's a five-yard return. Joe Taylor, John Nidelle, Abe Garcia down on the sidelines. And, of course, our spotter, Jimmy Root, our statistician, Brian Ferguson, our social media producer, keeping you updated on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, of course, is Tyler Martin. Facebook.com backslash Westlake Nation. The Twitter handle at Westlake underscore Nation. Follow along, folks. This is going to be a fun 7-15. Left in the fourth quarter. Two wide receivers each way. The ball marked at the 35 on the right hash mark in Westlake territory. Now Ellinger trying to flush his way out of co coverage. And now Ochoa's got him wrapped up. And Ochoa drops him for a big loss. Ochoa inside the 20-yard line. Down to about the 17. And I'll tell you what. Ochoa has been in the back pocket. And to borrow a Gene Hackman line... Pretty sure Ochoa knows exactly what kind of gum Sam Ellinger is chewing because he has been in his face all night. And just a sack fest, really, here in the second half. Sam Ellinger ha not having time to throw, and he's also the reserve receiver's open, so he can't throw the football. Second down and 25, the handoff here to Rawlings, and Rawlings wrapped up there. Bateman taking on Brewer, but Brewer fighting off that block, and pretty much everybody in the back side of the defense coming in to help tackle Sean Rawlings. He does advance the ball out to about the 23-yard line, so it'll be a three-yard gain. So third down and 19 coming up here with 6.15 to play in the ball game. And hats off here, the defensive coordinator, Randall Edwards. He has called a beauty against this Westlake front. Snap is back. 
Now Ellinger looking to air it out. Has one-on-one -on -one coverage. A step with Laycock. He uh, angles and fires his hands back towards the football, and it's incomplete. Good coverage downfield by Bush. Bush just right there. No pass interference called. Reaching back for the football. It could have really gone either way, but the referee's on that side, right in front of it. Good time in the pocket. And it was intended for Laycock. We get a good look at the replay here. And maybe that right hand on the back side of his shoulder pad yeah, could have come in. a lot of contact in. there, and he didn't turn to look for the football. That, that's pretty close, but if I was down there, I'd probably throw the flag. But, I've, you know, you see those kind of calls not called either. So on fourth and 22, Westlake unable to capitalize on the stop earlier, and now Manolo Gonzalez putting his right boot into this one. Roller coming over, makes the grab, but juggles it, and he's tossed to the sidelines immediately by Barrett Chambers. How about the sophomore? Barrett Chambers, just a physical football player, and just taking Chris Roller right to the mat at the 40-yard line. So now... The Westlake defense, you got to start thinking of a way to create an opportunity. Once again, a three and out for Westlake puts the defense right back on the field. You know they're hurting, and obviously they're on the wrong end of this 24-7 score. 5.45 to play in the ball game. Lake Travis with a 17-point advantage. They've outscored Westlake 14 to nothing here in the second half. Westlake has not scored since the first quarter. And now Green going in motion. They fake the screen, and that is a bulldozer of a big-time tackle in the backfield on Abe Willows and Brecken Hager, if required. A huge hit inside the 42-yard line, and that's where the ball goes back to the 38-yard line, excuse me. The ball right in the middle of the field. What a huge hit by Brecken Hager on Abe Willows. And you know the senior future Longhorn, he's not going to quit here in this game. He's going to keep playing, as are all these chaparrals. Brecken Hager's in the on the last couple of drives has made a couple of nice stops and right there with a big stop there to set up now a second down and 14. At the 38-yard line, ball in the middle of the field, two receivers each way. Willows staying in the block, back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Willows, or excuse me, Delira going downfield, and that pass is incomplete. Intended for humble downfield into double coverage. It's incomplete. The one thing saving the Westlake Chaparrales right now, it's not necessarily a running team. They don't run the football all that much, do the Chaper or do the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Willows has just over 700 yards rushing, but the one thing that is kind of the saving grace in this 17-point deficit for Westlake is every time they throw the ball and it's incomplete, that clock stops, John. Two wide receivers each way here on third and 14. Big play here for Westlake. Two wide receivers each way, bunched up on the near side left, spread out on the far side right. The ball right between the hash marks on third and 14. Here comes the blitz. Delira airs it out downfield, has Barkley, and knocking it away there is Steven Rio. And taking a swing, and there comes the flag. How about it? Malik Barkley's having a whale of a night, but there just a little frustration as Barkley wanted the ball. It was played perfectly by Rio, and Barkley took a swipe. Yeah, that's just beautiful coverage there by Steven Rio. We didn't see the swipe there at the end, but he did. And it's unsportsmanlike conduct against Malik Barkley. What a game he's had tonight. So and it's fourth down now, and Rio wants everybody to get up on the Westlake side. And Westlake, they've traveled, but haven't traveled that well. They don't feel, they do not feel the stands, or at least fill them there. Obviously, the High Line and the Westlake Band filling up the auxiliary stands. But to be honest with you, there's a... It's very difficult to get out here. The parking is a mess, but right now I know a lot of you are listening from lands far away, and right now Westlake with time running out, they've done the good job here in the last two defensive series to get Lake Travis off the field. Now they got to come try with a punt block. Here comes the rush, almost getting through, and this is a very low and quick punt that will be fielded out of bounds. At a right around the 44-yard line, one of the coaches there on the near side with the one-handed grab, and this is a huge break for Westlake as Delira knew that everybody in the kitchen sink was coming after that football, and he just got it and kicked it downfield. About a 30-yard punt, and it's a big, big series here for Westlake. They nothing in the second half to suggest that they can move the football. I can think of one really big play, John, and that was the 15-yard catch by Coakley in the third quarter that tacked another 15 yards with the late hit out of bounds on Bailey, and that's pretty much it for this Westlake offense. They've got to find a way to convert, move the ball, and get into the end zone. 24-7 to with 4.41 to play. 
the ninth annual Battle of the Lakes. Lake Travis has won the last six. Westlake has, has not won in this ball game since 2007. Now the fake the handoff, play action. Ellinger looking, has time, fires downfield into double coverage, and that pass is caught, juggled, and dropped. Oh, man, I don't know how a flag is not down at the 10-yard line because it was basically a pinball situation. Let's take a look at it. Play action, Ellinger with a perfect throw. He really delivers that over-the-top delivery. Contact before contact as the ball's coming down. Bush actually was the one that made the contact before the ball got there. No call, probably the right call, but there was a lot of contact downfield. They're going to go ahead and call it incidental. And it's second down and 10 after the long incompletion to Laycock. And you have to credit this Lake Travis secondary. They have done a great job. Second down and 10 from the 45-yard line. Ellinger back to pass to pick up the blitz. Now here comes the pocket. He bounces it outside to the 45, out to the 50. There's flags everywhere. And Ellinger steps out of bounds right here at the 49-yard line in front of the Lake Travis bench, and he is left down there. Nobody helping him up. And actually, Chase Coakley had to come all the way to the sideline to pick up his quarterback. But this is a holding penalty against Westlake. And it's going to be a 10-yard penalty from the spot. And... Westlake just going backwards. And John, I hate to say it, nothing really working white right for the Chaparrales this evening. No, and it's all about pass protection right now. And, and like you said, this defensive secondary has really held strong here in the second half. But that Bowie game, right after that Bowie game, because this is very similar to that game in terms of Lake Travis and Bowie getting a lot of pressure on Sam Ellinger and Westlake just not being able to move the football because of it. They made some switches on the offensive line after that Bowie game. And coming into this game, switched back they made the switches back to the way they were against Bowie and I don't know if that's the reason why they've struggled with protection but I tell you what Sam just hasn't had time in the pocket second down and 20 after the 10 yard penalty on the hold Ellinger's just going to dump it over to Rawlings and Rawlings couldn't make the catch and that's a huge hit by John Brewer and nobody happy there as Brewer is up celebrating and there's a flag and that's going to cost Brewer and Lake Travis 15 yards that cannot be against Rawlings. He got absolutely blown up on that play. Just yeah, a little was... Statue of Liberty opportunity. That's helmet on helmet. And I don't think that they're just laying on top of Rawlings and then a well. shove there. It could go against Westlake. Yep, it's on Brewer. So it's 15 <laughs> yards and automatic first down. I'll say, too, Sean kind of baited him a little bit. He was oh, grabbing the back of his helmet, which made it look like live that Brewer was kind of driving Sean into the turf while both while he was laying on top of him but really not the case as you see him trying to just get up as Sean is grabbing the back of his helmet but uh, Sean is able to draw the 15 yard penalty there on Lake Travis so it's first and 10 and it's like the loss has never happened because the Shaps have the ball at midfield two wide receivers each way rolling right is Ellinger Ellinger looking firing downfield that pass is wide and incomplete intended for Nick Scott Brewer there on the coverage and uh, you heard Todd Dodge talk about it in our pregame interview if you're listening live to the Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue Tailgate Show. He's talking about these linebackers. They, it was kind of like the linebackers that he had for so many years. And it just seemed like at South Lake Carroll, you had 5'10", 5'11", 180, 190-pound guys that could just fly all over the field. That's the case here with York and Brewer. They've been running away from York, so Brewer is the one that's getting the call, and he has been everywhere. On second down and 10, flags fly here in early movement by Wesley. Everyone but the center on that one. And Wasmuth getting the opportunity to, to start again at center. And when you have such an effective game along the offensive line at Hayes, the switch back to the original offensive line outside of Bryce Foreman, Foreman out with that injury, he's got that injured toe. And Wasmuth seemingly making a, a decent opportunity to play anywhere along the offensive line, is including center, and he's also played right guard. But tonight we see Michael Morrell back in that right tackle position. And it's second down and 15 after the fall start. Here comes the blitz. Stepping up in the pocket is Ellinger. Ellinger has time, just dumps it off to Kane and Clark Bateman. He somehow makes the catch and advances the ball just outside the right. Hash marks inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. It's a 13-yard, make it a 16-yard pickup, excuse me. A 16-yard pickup and a first down. The stop is made by Austin Hiller. Actually make it 17 yards. My statistician, Brian Ferguson, go ahead and count that extra yard for Bateman on the catch. Three wide receivers to the far side left. One here to the near side right. It's Coakley. 
Now here comes the pressure. Stepping up, running into traffic there, trying to throw the ball downfield, and that pass is juggled and almost intercepted. I tell you what, that would have wrapped up the night. Ochoa almost had the interception, but it was Brewer that wrapped up Sam Ellinger, and Ellinger just trying to get the ball to move forward. Womack coming out from the bottom of the pile as well, so it's an incomplete pass. A lot of activity there as Ellinger just could not get loose. And Jordan Edgar doing everything possible to keep Ellinger safe, but he just could not give him the extra room there in the pocket. Right now, a good alternative would be to just start making Ellinger roll right or left, trying to throw on the run. Second down and 10. They throw to the left, and the inside pass is tipped and dropped by Klubnik. So Klubnik saw that pass come into his hands, and he just could not hang on to it. Bush there on the coverage, along with James Bailey. And you can see just a little slip screen there, running a thousand times, and this time they just couldn't come up with it. Bateman was there on the block. They were able to make that grab. Klubnik had some room to work. And now, with 3.27 left in the ballgame and a 17-point deficit, a timeout has been called. Let's go ahead and take it with Westlake. Back in a moment, this is... We welcome you back to Cavalier Stadium, live at Lakeway. Three wide receivers to the far side left out of the timeout. Westlake left with one. Now rolling left is Ellinger. Still rolling, still looking, still trying to fire. Can't do it. And he's dragged down there, but there's a flag. And it looked like it was Fino Pearson, possibly Hiller there as well. But this could be a horse collar and a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. We get a good look at it. In fact, it's coming right at our cameras on the television broadcast. And that face is mask. a face mask. And it will be mm. an automatic first down. So big. And a really dangerous tackle, too. Coming from behind, so kind of rolled Sam's legs up underneath him. Good to see Sam pop up after that play, although he is kind of favoring that left leg. He was a little bit before that play and kind of limping just a little bit. But even rolling the pocket there like they did to the sideline, Lake Travis just bringing three guys, and they're still able to get some pressure on Sam, but as he's rolling out, just can't find any receivers open downfield. Only seven total yards of offense for Westlake in the second half before that play. So 15 yards, automatic first down, puts the ball at the Lake Travis 23-yard line. Now on the play action, looking, now firing the screen pass. It's complete to Nick Scott. Scott inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line, and he's knocked out of bounds there by, Fe by Fino Pearson. And Pearson's slow to get up after he delivers the blow on to Nick Scott, but it's a nice pickup there, and will bring up second down. About a six-yard gain. It'll be second down and four, and the Shaps just inside the red zone, down to about the 17-yard line. So it's a six-yard pickup officially, second and four. Three wide receivers to the near side right, one to the far side left. From the left hash, now looking towards the end zone. Fade route to Coakley. Coakley elevating. Coakley can't make the grab. It's incomplete, but what a play by Bush. Tanner Bush just getting right up in the face of Coakley, and Coakley could not bring it down. Nice defensive play, a microcosm of how this secondary has played against these wide receivers tonight. Yeah, it looked like Coakley might have a chance, but I think he went a little too deep towards the sideline in the back of the end zone. Needed to come in and maybe initiate some of the contact with the defensive back and go up and high point that football. Instead, it was able to fall a little short and allow the defensive back to make a play on it, but just a good play there as the ball was in there a little play, a little late. Nice play there by the junior, Tanner Bush. On third down and four, Ellinger looking, now has to roll. He has to retreat, and he's going to be brought down at the 33-yard line. It's Garrett Womack, and like John Nidell said, it is a sack fest, and right now Ellinger very slow to get up. He is going to have an incredibly rough Saturday as he tries to walk this off. And right now, it's fourth down, and he's got his hands on his hips, and the body language says it all. He has been absolutely beaten and battered tonight. And he's just, I think he's relying just a little too much on his escapability in terms of, you know, he's trying to escape, but just those Lake Travis defenders are just too fast and bearing down on him. He's got to realize that he's not going to be able to get away from those guys and just fire the football, either fire it to a receiver or fire it somewhere where a receiver can't get it so you can live to play another down on fourth and short let's, instead of fourth and 15. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep it here on the timeout. It is Westlake's 
uh, timeout. We'll go to the sidelines. Abe, I know the mood is obviously just a dejected feeling on the sidelines because of the outcome of this game. And really, Dodd said it in the pregame show. As well as our when our offensive line plays well, we play well. Well, unfortunately, that story is very much the case because right now the offensive line not playing very well over the course of the entire ball game, and unfortunately, Westlake on the wrong end of a 24 to 7 score. Yeah, and give Lake Travis credit. Their defensive line and their secondary has given Westlake a lot of fits. Sam, for the first time this season, seems indecisive in the pocket. He's been spinning out. I think Lake Travis and their coaches have did a great job of scouting. That's Sam's go-to move is to spin to his right. He hasn't been able to get away and make plays. And just tell you how powerful we've, you and I, you guys have watched a lot of football. We've seen a lot of football at all levels. Momentum is a powerful thing. That touchdown before the half, I mean, that's the, that was the game. That was it. And Lake Travis took advantage of it. Fourth down play here. Sam forced to go for it out of the timeout. Really just took the timeout so he could get a breather and get everything collected before this play. Here's fourth at 18 from the 31-yard line. Go into the end zone. Sam has Coakley. Coakley leaping. Coakley can't make the catch. As he was battered up in the air, it was Tanner Bush along with Austin Hiller. And right now, Coakley's down. Coakley got sandwiched between Bush and Hiller, and right now this is not good as Chase Coakley is down flat on his back in the corner of the end zone as Westlake once again, as if it couldn't get worse. Ellinger going right down to look at his junior wide receiver, and he is down right there looking at Chase Coakley right in the eyes, trying to figure out what's wrong with him. Lake Travis's trainer is gone. Onto the field, no doubt we're going to see Nude Hassan. There he is, 30 years strong, and he's on a hustle in boots, no less, to the end zone to check on Chase Coakley. Uh, he took a shot, like you said, sandwiched, and is either right to the midsection or maybe along that left arm. And you just hope that Chase Coakley, especially in this kind of ball game where the where the outcome's pretty much decided at 24-7 and a playoff run is soon to come, you hope that Chase Coakley is okay. Well, he's been, a, he's been a huge threat, especially as a possession receiver. And uh, most of the time, Chase Coakley is open about seven yards out. He just runs that little comeback route to perfection. He ran it earlier and juked out James Bailey, picked up 15 yards. Coakley immediately on his feet. It was a hard landing. Abe Garcia saw it pretty well. It was a hard landing. And when you see that kind of thing happen, and the breath gets knocked out of you, it looks a heck of a lot worse than it actually is. Once air returns to the lungs, John, you, you find your power and you can get up pretty quickly, but Chase took a shot. Luckily, he's not favoring right or left leg. Doesn't look like anything is bugging him, and his quarterback is actually gonna escort him off the field. And we will see Lake Travis take over on offense, and it will be the final 94 seconds as the Cavaliers have two timeouts left. Westlake unable to stop the clock at this point. First down and 10, 24 to 7. Delira is going to take a knee. Hager was already in the backfield, and he had to back it off. You heard the Breck and Hager talk about it. His big brother Bryce, starting linebacker for the Baylor Bears, in the house watching this one. Bron Hager wore the number five. The last time, there, I shouldn't say the last time, the first time that this ball game was played, right here against Garrett Gilbert in his sophomore season. On second and ten with 102 to play. Dom Delirious is just waiting for the play clock to wind down inside five seconds. He'll snap it at probably two or one second. And here's the snap and the kneel down. And once again, Hager will not quit. He's in the backfield right in the face of Dom Delira. He's making sure that he knows that I'm still here and I'm still playing football. Bron Hager, war number five, played running back in that 2006 game, the inaugural Battle of the Lakes. Back then, the Chick-fil-A partners dubbed that the Great Lakes Showdown. It's kind of turned into the Battle of the Lakes over the course of the years, but that should be the final knee on the subject. And Lake Travis keeps their district record perfect. And if they go on to win their seventh consecutive Battle of the Lakes, Great Lakes Showdown with their neighbors to the east. Your final score, the Lake Travis Cavaliers, 24, Westlake, 7. 
eight sacks in the second half for the Lake Travis defense. And it really spells the entire story as the offensive line for the Westlake Chaparrales unable to come up with an answer for Sam Ochoa, unable to give Sam Ellinger time to throw the football, excellent coverage downfield. And I hate to say it, I don't want to take anything away from Dom DeLira and of course Malik Barkley, but despite the 24 point total on the board, John, this game was won by the defense and you got to look at the pressure that they put on Sam Ellinger they had a plan up front defensively and for the most of the second quarter and pretty much all of the second half there was not a defensive lineman down in a technique of some sort all of them were up all of them were coming full speed the entire time and with no pause in the turf those guys were coming with everything they had and you got to hand it to John Brewer and of course James Bailey up front but Sam Ochoa, what a whale of a game on the defensive line when they're down a man on the defensive line as well. As we got the word before this game start, started that Tevin Paul was out with a broken foot. He was in the two deep as much as this morning. And it's unfortunate as Westlake, no doubt they really wanted to win this game. But you have to move on. And luckily, once again, following a loss, Westlake will only have six days to prepare for Dale Valley. So they lost to Bowie. They had a Thursday game against Aikens. Now the loss here to Lake Travis. They've got a Thursday game against Del Valley. It'll happen on October 30th. We'll be live on the air at 7 o'clock. The kick at 7.30. The Westlake School song. And then, of course, we will get the thoughts of head coach Todd Dodge here. Again, your final score, 24-7. Lake Travis victorious over the Westlake Chaparrales. With the loss, Westlake drops to a 4-2 district record. Like we mentioned, they do have left to play Del Valley next Thursday and then the following Friday they're on the road to Bob Shelton Stadium to meet up with the Lobos of Lehman out of the Kyle and Hayes Consolidated District so Lake Travis victorious and these seniors especially those three linebackers Brecken Hager Hudson Hall and Gabe Duran they all know that they had an opportunity early the game was close 10-7 halftime lead but once again, we told you that it was going to be how each team responded in the third quarter. And right now, they are sprinting off the field. And they're gonna, it looks like they're gonna stay on the field, and Coach uh, Todd Dodge is actually going to have a word with them before they leave the field, or at least he's gonna have his post-game word with him right now. So we will keep it here, and everybody kind of hits a knee. Dodge looking and surveying his entire ball club here. As you can see, Jacob Pro throws down there. We get a good look at Sean Rawlings. Everybody, eyes on coach. And to me, when you win, John, it's easy to address your ball club. It's when you lose a game like this, in my opinion, where you earn your money in the game of football as a, as a high school coach, especially a successful one as Todd Dodge. And we talked about it in No Huddle. He's been in big games as a player and as a coach. He mentioned that uh, 2006 semifinal game with Trinity in, uh, in Texas Stadium, 56,000 people uh, there to watch a high school football game between two of the powerhouses in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. He's talked about playing Auburn. He talked about playing Texas A&M. He talked about playing in the Red River Shootout in Texas and OU. And really, he wanted to keep this week loose. Be hyped early, be loose late. Calm yourself down so you can play well. And unfortunately, that just didn't happen tonight. And you got it. You can't really take anything away from Lake Travis, John, because they played very, very well, especially Dom DeLira. Yeah, Lake Travis played well. All credit goes to them in this football game because they won every phase, each phase, all three phases, special teams, defense, offense. They beat Westlake in this football game. But these types of losses, we've seen it. We saw it two years ago in 2012. These are pivot points for a, for a football team, and it can be a pivot point for Westlake. They can either give up, which with the senior leadership on defense, I don't think that's going to happen. Not going to happen. Or they can use this, fuel it, use it as fuel to spark a playoff run like they did two years ago to go to the state semifinals and just seconds away from a state championship appearance. We'll see if they can do that. If, if Sean Rawlings can get to the point where he feels really comfortable, we didn't quite see that spark from him tonight, but that's what's missing from this offense uh, in addition to pass protection is simply having a running back who can take it to the house and who can provide that spark. And we haven't really seen that from Westlake so far this year. Well, here we are back up in the UFCU broadcast booth, the Joe Taylor alongside John Nidell while Todd Dodge talks to his team. We are probably going to 
at least try to go to Abe Garcia, but uh, it looks like we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up. So now we're back at the UFCU broadcast booth here. Hi atop Cavalier Stadium. I'm Joe. He's John. We're going to forego the post-game interview with Todd Dodge just because of the scenario. Trying to get everybody off the field is very difficult. It's a logistical nightmare here on the hill in southwest Travis County as, unfortunately, Westlake falling 24-7. to Joe Taylor, John Nidell, really we've talked about it here for the last five or six minutes after the ball game ended, John. Tonight's game really won by Lake Travis in all phases of the game. They played better on special teams. They played better up front offensively as far as your offensive line play. But Sam Ochoa and that defensive line, epic game tonight. They had a plan coming in against this Westlake offensive line. Yeah, they, Westlake had no chance there in the third quarter, fourth quarter. Lake Travis dominated on the defensive side of the football and offense too. Westlake could not stop. Could not get off the field there in the second half, and it all combined for a big second half for Lake Travis as they exploded from that two-minute drive at the end of the first half on to the rest of the game. Lake Travis dominated, and they deserve this victory tonight. So they win. They keep their district championship hopes alive. They meet Bowie next week to try to seal it up for not only a playoff berth, but also a district title. So congrats to Lake Travis, their seventh consecutive win over Westlake in the uh, Battle of the Lakes. The ninth annual one goes the way of the Cavalier. Again, for everybody that helped out on the broadcast, Westlake Technical Entertainment crew, David Poole, Jeff Strange, Dale Baker. For John Nidell, Abe Garcia, I'm Joe Taylor. We say goodnight from Lakeway. The final score, once again, Lake Travis defeating Westlake 24-7. We'll be back for the postgame wrap-up. Again, the drive home presented by BMW of Austin. But again, you'll watch this broadcast live Sunday morning, 9 a.m. on the replay on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 323. Until next week, six days away from football as Westlake closes out their home regular season schedule against Del Valley. It'll be senior night Thursday, 7 o'clock for the pregame, 7.30 for the kick. Until then, I'm Joe Taylor saying good night from Lakeway. This is Westlake Football. <laughs>